Should we do it? Yeah, let's uh, redo it. Um, <laughs> Comedy's always funnier the second time. That's right. <laughs> Shut up, Greg. <laughs> Welcome to We Are Libertarians hey, for this week. I am your host, Chris Spangle. Across from me is Greg Lenz. Chris, how are you, buddy? I'm doing pretty well. Uh, to my left is Chloe Anagnos. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Great. How are you? Good. I'm not even here. And then uh, what is, is little your voice. I know he's he's <laughs> upset we didn't introduce him first. No, I'm just upset that we didn't go in the order in which we're seated and the order in which the first time we did the intros. I'm sorry, I did ladies first. You know, sometimes oh, it's his, okay. as his assistant, sometimes it's nice to be thought of first. I know, yeah. And then little Brett Bittner's here. No, no, we're we're dropping that. We're all on hashtag Never Bittner now. <sighs> Everybody can go and get their shirts. It's got my face on it. It's a great color, the best color. I don't know that there is a better color. People tell you all the time you People have the best People tell me all the time I have the best colors. <laughs> And so you can get your T-shirt at tchip.com slash neverbittner. $5 from each T-shirt sold goes to We Are Libertarians. So far, Spangle is up to a whopping $35. Nice. Boom. All right. I'll take it. I'll and take it. Is he going to buy Jeremiah Morrill Giacomo's pizza? Uh, for hell $35? no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you could get him Giacomo's like five times with that. Oh, well, Jeremiah just can't win. No. He, no. he is a member of the uh, Jeremiah Morrill Pizza Club, so – you go to WeAreLibertarians.com, and you click on the right side. You can join the pizza club. Seven, In true libertarian se- fashion, rather than giving him financial support, you've decided to bestow upon him a title. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyways, yes, we are uh, here. We're, st- we're apparently doing uh, a Facebook Live video because I'm, I'm going to try and Facebook Live these. I tried to be fancy and hook the board right into the, to the, to the uh, equipment. We're doing the internets. Yeah, we're doing the internets, but uh, I, I don't know. If, I don't know if it's working or not. Well, so that's all right. We'll see. The people will. Uh, they will be okay if we don't live stream. Yeah. Somebody text me and tell me if it's working or not. Uh, <laughs> this <Right> presumption. <laughs> right. would, hey, I know you're watching. Anybody let me tuned know. in? All of you watching, tell me. There's like tw- twenty people watching. Are there really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, we've got lots and lots of fans. Basements across the country <laughs> are going wild right now. Yeah. So uh, we've got uh, someone said, ha, 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 Brett. So clearly no one's listening. Clearly. (laughs) Now, oh, it's working. Uh, Sweet. So, yes, Brett Bittner, uh, famous for coming on We Are Libertarians. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Uh, Definitely. This is your your own cause then. That's what he's saying. Coming on to We Are Libertarians to talk about his favorite subject, Brett Bittner. Has, well, no, just just my T-shirts right now. Has launched his own clothing line. Yep, Never Bittner. Hashtag right. Never Bittner. Right. It's not working. Tchip.com slash Never Bittner. You guys need to make sure. I'm going to check in at the end of the show for all the 20 people that are watching the live stream uh-huh. and make sure that all 20 of them have purchased their Never Bittner T-shirts. Do you have yours yet? No, mine hasn't come in yet. Okay, so when you have it, you have. we have to do the live stream and you have to wear it. That seems oh, to be the official shirt at that the you next, wear. If I have it by the next wall live, if I'm actually allowed to come. Um, I will definitely make sure that I wear it. Yes. You uh, should wear it, and we will make sure that you're up there only if you are wearing a ballerina tutu. <laughs> oh, no. The, Scylla has all of those right now. I know. Maybe, maybe she needs – maybe your pug Scylla needs – she needs a never bitten her outfit. She has one. Does well, she really? It's on order. Are you serious? You yeah. made your own dog an outfit that has your face on it. Yeah. And never – hashtag never bitten her. Of course. Why wouldn't I? This is the greatest hashtag in the history of hashtags. <laughs> it's, Man. it's the greatest reverse psychology campaign of all time. <laughs> that is kind of true. I mean, it's yeah. 100% effective so far. <laughs> it is. Uh, yeah, so get your Never Bittner t-shirts. Uh, what, is the, what is the address again? T-chip.com. T-chip.com slash Never Bittner. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll put it no in the show notes. No hashtag, though. I'll put it in the show notes, yeah. too, yeah. Uh, so and apparently your... Jeremiah wants to make sure that we talk about him. And to ask me why I went swimming yesterday. Uh, see, this whole live stream thing may be bad because now people think that they can get on the show by joining in on the mm, Facebook Live. And that is not how not we do cool. things. No. Not cool, Jeremiah. This not is not cool. interactive. You, it has to be earned. Right. You have to you have to earn it, earn in your placement with your leader. Uh, some of you may notice a little bit of a difference. It, and, and I don't know why, but it's really only on my mic I can hear the difference. But on your guys' mic, I think it's... It's the professional broadcast quality voice that I have. Mm-hmm. Um, All right. Thanks to Jason Doolittle. He bought us uh, Behringer Multicom Pro XL, and it's a compressor. So if we all just stay silent for a moment, 
you don't hear anything. And you used to be able to hear traffic. You used to be able to hear air conditioning, mittens, me breathing heavily into the microphone, <laughs> especially when Chloe's here. Oh, God. Um, Preparing alert. Uh, that's, a, that's why you're sitting over there. It's like we're at the convention all over again. Oh, <laughs> God. The live stream is no. even hooked up. So we, we now have uh, that taking place. It sounds great, and I wanted to thank him for, for that. If you want to join, uh, click our Amazon wish list. It's in order of importance at wearelibertarians.com. Greg, how are you feeling? You look, you look like you're a little tired. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. It's been a long, uh, it's been a long weekend starting. Uh, I, I told you I'd been helping out with uh, Andrew Horning. He is running for Congress in District 8 here in Indiana. And That's a long way from where you live, Greg. Why it would is. you be helping out with a candidate all the way down there? Your well, commitment well, to liberty is so unparalleled. Well, see, I've found that the toxic and divisive label has actually, it doesn't go further south than Bloomington. And so no. I'm going to where I'm accepted. Ah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I am true. toxic and divisifying Southern Indiana next. After that, it will be to the Northern region, and by the I guess by the end of the year or election season, I will have completely in- infected. That's not maybe the word you want to use. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he uh, he Andy kicked off his barnstorming tour of District Eight with uh, Evansville media appearances. Did eight of them in all. And uh, started with the Evansville Courier Press on Friday night and went all the way through to a TV interview with their local affiliate um, Sunday afternoon. And then um, just getting things together, getting it launched. It's been, awesome. It's been awesome. He's, I can't get over that the media he has received is incredible given, you know, the struggle we have always fought yeah. in getting the same level of access and the type of coverage that the major two parties have gotten. Yeah, especially Andy. Andy really, uh, I think it was 2004 – Whoa, that's us. Sorry, guys. Uh, he, in 2004, very professional broadcast. Uh, in 2004, he went outside of the major state newspaper, the Indianapolis Star, and lit it on fire. And then for subsequent runs, couldn't figure out why the Indianapolis Star would never cover him. <laughs> Traditionally detrimental to positive coverage. <laughs> right. Well, you know, everything is different now. I mean, that's why hashtag never bitten there is trending <laughs> okay. yeah, on Twitter nationally. It was. It was at one point. We were. It was crazy. People are love not feeling the bitner. That's right. Yep. <laughs> now, uh, little Brett Bittner, you were successful in your uh, mission and we failed as a as a hashtag to get rid of you. Yep. You guys. You Terrible. Absolutely terrible. We propelled him into the national uh, Libertarian Party <laughs> as. Oh, congratulations on your win. As Thank you. District th- District Three representative at the na- national level. Yep, big Regis deal. Rep for Indiana, Michigan, Ohio, Kentucky. I stepped up from the alternate spot. No thanks to Greg because he wasn't there for the vote. But uh, you really would have wanted to say that Greg Lenz of We Are Libertarians endorsed you. I thought you wanted to win. Well, <laughs> yeah. it, your other your other person that was endorsed, your other endorsement, uh, Nick Sarwark, also won with sixty five percent of the vote. I know, but that's because I haven't fully infected nationally oh, okay. the Libertarian Party. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll make, sure to, time. I'll make time. sure to take you to all of my uh, all of my events here in Indiana, Michigan, Ohio, and Kentucky, and, and we'll make sure that you start the infection. I will. I'll be glad right. to wear my armband of the Liberty Windmill that some might recognize from the 1940s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> it, at least it's not an iron cross that you're going to. Yeah. Know. Yeah. <laughs> Brand on my arm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Chloe. What? <laughs> oh. What? Why I'm are you kidding. So moody. Do you want me to bring up the long conversation I had last night with your sister? No. No one wants that. No one wants to hear. Had that. a long hour long conversation with Chloe's nineteen year old sister last night. It's no big deal. Mm-hmm. She's nope. working on her YouTube page. She, she is. Yeah, I'm helping her get into show business. <laughs> oh man, we got ourselves a libertarian Cosby on our hands. <laughs> <aren't we? laughs> Wait, want to be a, 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 a libertarian celebrity, hun? <laughs> Now, uh, uh, Chloe, you attended your first uh, National Libertarian Convention. I did. I bet you were popular. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was so popular. How, po- how popular were you? I was so popular that I probably have many, many new suitors. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just kind of leave it at that. No, let's, let's keep going. Let's flush this out. Let's flush this out. Tell us some of the stories. Because, listen, Chloe. If I may touch you. Oh, my God. How about not? <laughs> oh that boy. was him putting the lotion on its skin. <laughs> Chloe. <laughs> get, come back here. Uh, put the lotion on the basket. Yeah. I will marry an anagnos. Get over here. <laughs> <laughs> I will. 
There goes voluntarism right out the window. <laughs> Prima nocta. Oh, he's about to bore out wedding sack you. <laughs> no. Wow. I think I think it's important that libertarians hear what they're like, <laughs> how they come yes. across to women. Yeah. Um, well, let's let's talk about some of the horror stories of being an attractive female at a libertarian convention. Okay, I don't even think it has to do with being an attractive female because there was one day where I showed up in glasses, no makeup, just pants, button-down shirt, flats, like Elkhart no, formal. Elkhart formal, yes, gas. exactly. Nothing <laughs> no. but gas everywhere. Severely bloated. <laughs> no. Eyes puffy. Dry shampoo like I I just kind of showed up, right? Still got some of the same people that came over and talked to me. So, mm-hmm. I don't really think it matters what you look like. It's just, I don't know. I like to think that I'm a nice person and a couple days where Do I was you? looking pretty cute. <laughs> yeah. You're hanging out with the everybody. Wrong crowd. You know, Hitler, no, really? I haven't heard that. Hitler thought <laughs> that too. That. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. I can't tell you how many SOS text messages I got and SOS phone calls. and Yeah. It, it is. It's something, and it, we joke about it. Like, you know, we joke about the creepertarian, you know. It's real. Yeah. yeah it's it's, but it's, it's real. highly, it is really preventative. For, when we have these long discussions on how we appeal to women, how do we reach outreach effectively? talk about the issues they care about because we do tend to be focused on the economic side right and we do tend to be focused on the um you know just more i guess you could say the less feelsy things mm-hmm. speak for yourself that's true you're very good no you're you and chris are both like two excellent examples of people who are able to sell the libertarian message in a like heartfelt um high i guess people are just people listen you, you sell libertarianism in relatable stories very well yeah especially that appeal to the emotional side because that's there, it's just rarely used. Yeah. It's one, and it's the, arguably the most effective tactic we have in spreading the message. Unfortunately, so though, most are the Austrian economic school of selling liberty. Yeah, I, w- I will say. And, and, Hi. Oh, please stop. I mean, have Brett. Read, Brett, is there anything? Hard? Is I mean, I a couple of them I don't really want to talk about. On like, I'd rather you kind of talk about. I wasn't there. I just got a lot of SOS text messages and phone you, calls. You you tell us. This is entertainment. Part of being a libertarian is taking uh, personal responsibility and handling issues yourself. Yeah, I, I will say. Don't I, ask for a Bittner subsidy. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag True. never Bittner. Yeah. True. Don't forget to get your T-shirts. T-chip.com. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Never Bittner. Um, I mean, He's the it works of the libertarian <laughs> party. <laughs> I mean, I did send a lot of SOS like messages to Brett, and then um, I think I sent a few to Chrissy Avery and said, mm-hmm. hey, like, can someone just kind of come and sit with me? Because I had... There's no air conditioning in this trunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. People are going to be like, Chloe, just get to the story. Um, but I had, I mean, people that just mainly, like, wouldn't go away. Like, it's that like, and, and that happens. But then I had, like, some advances that were very, like, inappropriate. What'd they say? Um, trying to follow me to my room. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like... Hey, I'll like B- I had to. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah. There's a reason that her room is always next to mine or across the hall from mine. Right. No, no, like I'll, I'll yeah. attest. Like Brett did a really good job of being like you know making sure that Chloe was. It's not that she was necessarily. Well, hopefully she was never unsafe. But no, that, that Chloe no. always felt comfortable or yeah. like yeah. not so creeped out she didn't want to participate the next day. Because yeah, we, we know absolutely. how. Yeah, we know how Chloe feels about human contact and human. <laughs> What's your deal? Yeah. What's your deal? So. She did have a couple people come up and ask her that. Really? Yeah, I had a lot of wall people that came over and talked to me, which was really cool. That's great. A lot of people asked about you, and were like, oh, my gosh, where's – is Lens going to be here? Is Spangle going to be here? I, I was there. Yeah. I made an appearance, and then yeah. – Which I never saw. Yeah, yeah. most people yeah. didn't because I, I, I thought, I don't want to come away from this disappointed <clears> about <throat> liberty and its prospects, so I'm just going to walk away and stay in my little, you know, and yet, my bubble of positive liberty. And yet you did. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll talk about that later. So you right. went to Orlando, did you? I did. Okay. Went down to Orlando. Yeah. Um, what did you do? Time, uh, hey, but... tell us a little bit about your flight. <laughs> Please do. Please so tell us. So my, my uh, quote-unquote <laughs> friends, <laughs> which I use that term very loosely, decided it would be hilarious as I'm checking in to get on my flight to head to Orlando that it's going to be just the funniest thing in the world to all of a sudden take the list of NSA trigger words, <laughs> which is every bit of 150 to 200 words long. It's 30, 350. 350. 350, and repeatedly post them on the, and as comments on my check-in at the airport, 
which shockingly my flight, although arriving on time, had an unexpected 30 minute delay where it neither had to back away from anything nor did the crew leave. It was basically a lockdown sweep because I was reported to TSA, Homeland Security, and Southwest Airlines as a known terrorist, both on Twitter and Facebook. Who, who would have done such a thing? That's oh, terrible. well, you know, that is that? terrible. Only good friends. Only good friends. <laughs> only, uh, only the worst kind of friends and podcast co hosts do such terrible and things. What kind of person photoshopped the picture of you next to Osama bin Laden? Wait, he didn't say anything about that. Oh. Yeah, that that was yeah, that was um, that was part of the narrative of selling it, if you will, to the authorities necessary to detain me at Guantanamo for an extended period of time without rights. Well, fly Just to Orlando. You had to go back. I did. Uh -huh. Just and thorough. Generous. Yeah, I know. Generous. Thorough. Yeah, generous and thorough, well, which we, we when were. they asked if two fingers would be okay, I asked for a third. You're right. If I'm going to have to go through this ridiculous exercise, I might as well enjoy it a little bit. Because you're a man. Yes. Anyway. And so a man. Did you really I'm a white a male. Did you really get a cavity search? No, just drug drug sniffing dog. The plane got delayed 30 minutes for no reason. And then they <laughs> took my bag off of the airplane after it was already ready to go on left me a nice little note when I arrived in Florida to get my toiletries for the <laughs> evening to brush my teeth and found out that there was nothing in it <laughs> with a wonderful note from the TSA letting them know that it had been confiscated. Now, see, and, uh, and I had everything perfectly folded and shocked to find out that it was all thrown and tossed aside and everything was a wrinkled mess touched by the grubby hands of some basement breathing mouth dweller that works you mean, for the airlines. You mean the blue gloves of freedom? I guess. Uh, this was a baggage handler I think probably has some sort of deep web rape channel. <laughs> or at least that's what I like to imagine the late night baggage handlers do. Now, to be fair, I don't. To be fair, I don't huh? think it to was. To be fair, to, huh? to be fair, I to don't. To be fair, that's I, an interesting choice of words. Don't think it was me. I I think it was John, who tweeted directly to Homeland Security's Twitter. Where would he have ever got that idea? <laughs> All right, I take full responsibility for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where I'm, and you you're stunned that somehow once I just, you listen. said it was okay that I was a flight a terrorist threat that a brutalist would think it was totally okay to report directly on Twitter that I in fact knew Bin Laden. There's photo evidence, and I have a history of talking about ISIS. I can't believe John thought that was okay. <laughs> you know, my participation. <laughs> I was simply pointing out that in the in the list of the trigger words, you guys forgot bomb. Uh, That's not a trigger word, remember? Well, I know it's not a trigger word, but it would seem that, you know, if Greg is on an airplane and there are comments about him being on an airplane, he, that bomb certainly needs to be. Especially included. with as swarthy as I am. The the right. one that was like 700 words wouldn't copy and paste on my phone. So, so you just decided to break it up into two. <laughs> so. Logical. Total, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> perfect sense. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey, Greg, want to come to a podcast? No, I'd love to, but actually right now I'm stuck with Chinese Uyghurs and Khalid Sheikh Mohammed in Guantanamo <laughs> enjoying ice cream. Wait, well, do, they, ice cream. do they get ice cream in Guantanamo? Oh, you haven't seen that? No. It was, oh, yeah. It's probably no. better than the they throw, swim yeah, and, and all kinds of stuff. See, I had fruit. I didn't have It's best to throw. keep terrorists happy. <laughs> now listen. I, uh, I I will not apologize. I did nothing wrong. <laughs> you did nothing wrong, huh? No. <laughs> Interesting. After years and years of abuse, of abuse <laughs> yeah. of in real life with real consequences <laughs> abuse. Yeah, yeah. Please name an example. <laughs> Well, there was that girl that was really uh, – uh, we can't get into her right now. She's getting married. Uh, so, no, What no. are you talking about? I helped you with her. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is all it okay, is. and I appreciate any full Jimmy wrestling that comes my way. <laughs> it's just a good thing that I am here today. I appreciate – the freedoms I am granted to still be able to podcast after being labeled a known terrorist. Let so, wait, wait. I have a question. How was the Megabus trip back from Orlando? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's just say this. The fingers of freedom. Blue gloves of freedom. Were not the only ones I received. <laughs> it was a homeless man named Keith. Yep. He had just gotten out of rehab in Pensacola. And I can tell you this, his hygiene efforts would not have been uh, approved by Vermin Supreme. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh, gosh. He was at the booth across, like, Caddy Corner for me. Oh, he was a poor and it, Yeah, the man that wears the boot mm. isn't a terrorist. But no, the, right. guy, the guy that hey, uh, wants to make America great again is a clear Osama bin Laden sympathizer. <laughs> now, <laughs> to be fair. To be fair, again, <laughs> odd word choice. I, 
you were like boarding. The, I think you were on the plane when I posted it. I was in line and I checked yeah. in, and then uh, shocking, a guy that's been on the show, um, Sam Goldstein, a libertarian here in Indiana. We were on the same flight. He comes up to me, and you know, but our plane had been delayed about thirty minutes. But I hadn't been checking my phone because it was about to die, mm-hmm. and so I don't. I'm, I'm totally unaware of this, of the delay or anything that's going on until I arrive in Orlando and I'm able to charge up my phone, <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit, <laughs> holy. <laughs> Do, and like, do we know for certain? Because so when I posted the keywords, I thought, all right, he's like on the plane. Nope, I would have been had the keywords not been posted. Uh, but see, you were like, it would have been around the. When was the, when did I post them? What point of your flight were you? On? It was uh, so it was right, but like it was when we were supposed to board, and okay. then we were unable to board. But see, how could they move that fast? I don't know. I'm not saying it was you. I'm saying that it's oddly coincidental Correlation that all this does went not down. Equal I, I'm totally taking credit. Don't. I would, too. I mean, yeah. it definitely enhances your persona <laughs> as a Jimmy wrestler, a known wrestler of the Jimmys. It's just that, you know, luckily, you know, I'm, I'm happy to not be in Guantanamo. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought when I posted, I was like, this will just be really funny. There's nothing. <laughs> 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 Indefinite detainment. <laughs> <laughs> well, who, who, Allegations of being pro-ISIS. Who? <laughs> 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 Who would have who would have actually thought that that would have actually gotten back to the NSA? To be fair, to be fair, yeah, they don't monitor social media though. No, no, there's it's totally not when unlikely. you tweet directly at them. It's totally they never unlikely there's that. not a paid monitoring person of We Are Libertarians that I is am an re- NSA you know uh, analyst. I am responsible for that, but I will not apologize. <laughs> John should apologize for the Photoshop of Greg next to Bin Laden and him tweeting that to Southwest Ther- South- 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 Airlines, Homeland Security, and the TSA. <laughs> And the NSA. Oh, you know, this good. was one of the best oh, stories they were that I told by the whole time <laughs> that we were down in Orlando. Oh, this is a great story. Yeah. It's oh, yeah, so we great. It's so the greatest time. story. Well, it is so fun. It is, it is so, so great. funny. There's never been a greater story. This guy we know that's a libertarian, guess what? Hilarious. <laughs> he convinced the TSA Hilarious he was meme. a terrorist. <laughs> Hysterical. <laughs> it really is. Oh. It's funny if it's not oh, you. Like you. Like you didn't try to get me back later at dinner. I didn't try to. I oh, oh by comparison, really? that is innocuous. No, that's that's easily the worst thing I've ever done to anybody in hindsight. Yeah, like, all oh, I yeah. I had the ball, all I did was Brett had noticed one of the tinfoil caucus of the Libertarian Party nationally, and who happened to recognize Brett came up and decided to sit with Brett Cohen and I as we were enjoying dinner. And at a certain point, I was like, well, this will just be this is justified. So I'm mm-hmm. going to start asking her all these questions about her life story. And continually turn it back to Brett so that Brett has to sit here and listen to this lady's sob story and her adventures in libertarianism. And all because I knew that Brett in his role as the chairman or the director for Advocates for Self-Government, he cannot afraid to, he cannot afford to alienate a single libertarian. He has to sit there and take it. And so by comparison, that was very, very innocuous. Considering it was on par with my participation. Uh-huh. You're either with us or against us. You're the <laughs> axis of evil. You're in the axis of evil. He put, he put Allahu Akbar he on did. this thing. Don't forget. Which is arguably okay. as bad as any other word. I was just it's welcoming. I was just, just sharing my love from the group that you guys added me to. Uh-huh. After Nick and I were at Don't the, add uh, me. I had nothing to do with Speedway adding you kissing to the bricks. Hey, just because you love <laughs> Allah. Just because you're on the anything. path to Jannah. Yeah. It does not <laughs> mean. <laughs> so uh, I was unaware. Oh, Someone, there's this Facebook. We have a we have a Muslim friend, Amir. He's a friend of the show. He's been on before, and Amir. He's the first ever. Right. And Amir sent. Uh, full Muslims, uh, and Aaron Ewert, our buddy, went in there one day and post. He took. Took this photo of Nick Sarwark and Brett kissing the bricks at the speedway, and it looks like they're kneeling to pray uh, in Islam. And as he's kneeling down, so he photoshopped the like the Taj Mahal behind it, right? Or something. This isn't even a right. terrible right. cultural misappropriation. Right. That was wrong. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's very wrong. Posted into uh, into the path to Jannah that he had saved brother Brett and that Brett had become a oh, Muslim. It's not Amir. It, no, it was Aaron that it did Aaron, it. Aaron, yeah. And so Aaron was like this superstar. They're like, who's this blonde-haired, blue-eyed white guy that is converting people to Islam? We have found the one. The, the great, Captain America convert of ISIS. The, the great white hope is upon us. 
And uh, inshallah, brother Aaron. For like how many weeks your mom called asking if you really converted to Islam? <laughs> I get asked about it every once in a while. So. <laughs> So many people want to come on this show, Greg. Yeah. It's just people ask. They go, yeah. can I come on We Are Libertarians? Can I be part of the crew? You don't no, want any of this. No, you don't want this. It, no. is, it is not for the faint of heart. No. The, the, the no. threat of being detained indefinitely <laughs> as a, you know, a, a real treasonous, you know, state uh, terrorist of the state. You know, I flirted right up the line. I, <laughs> you know, like you got right up to the line. Luckily, my pro-Trump support probably saved me from being detained. I know you were wearing your Make America Great Again hat. I'm so lucky that I bought that freaking hat. Otherwise, right now, <laughs> it would be me and the Sheikh talking about, you know, how I, he would mastermind 9-11 with Brett Bittner. To be fair, <laughs> to be fair, I just thought that you would land, see it, and have a good laugh. Right. I never anticipated that, that, that they would act so quickly that they could delay the plane. And steal all your toiletries. After everything Edward Snowden has told us, you shockingly thought, oh, surely this won't get noticed. <laughs> Who's watching? Exactly. Who's because watching? Who's watching us? Who's watching us? Apparently right. a lot of people because they all came up and talked to me at the convention. I know, yeah. so. I, which, which is very nice. And yeah. I am glad you got recognized for your article. And they recognized you as yeah. Chloe and Agnos from We Are Libertarians. Yeah. And I was recognized at least as many times as little Brett Bittner. As I was for my political resume and accomplishments. Thank you very much, Chris Stengel. You're welcome. It was awesome. Bittering at his own pace. At my own yep. pace. <laughs> ruining lives. <laughs> Making friends and ruining I lives. I can't believe you actually, now that you are the District 3 rep, you decided to come back. Well, now there are. I've got t-shirts to sell. <laughs> That's t-chip, true. tchip.com slash neverbittner. We are all whores to capitalism. Five dollars from each shirt goes to the wall. Shut up, Aaron. What's going on now? Don't forget when Chris gave Greg's phone number out, too. Yep. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, great. I mean, two strategic strikes compared to hundreds of memes. Hundreds of memes which were designed to be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Whose intent was to raise you to prominence, not to get you sent to Guantanamo. <laughs> Uh, six of one, half a dozen of yeah, another. Some, some say, hey, build me up so I'm a celebritarian. Some say, you have no rights. <laughs> are you Inshallah. Okay? Are you fine? I'm fine. Are you okay? My jimmies remain unrustled. All right, good. <laughs> yes. I don't want this to come between us. It is not going to come between us because ultimately I went to Disneyland where they would have – shockingly, the security at Disneyland is about ten times more strict than getting on an airplane. Seriously. Okay. I, I was fingerprinted three times and searched three times You're just kidding to even me. get into Epcot. How Seriously? thoroughly? Everyone was. How thoroughly were well, you I mean, searched? it's just the bags, but the fingerprinting is th- you three times. I, w- I wouldn't s- – I would be like, nope, sorry. Well, you don't have an option. It's don't go or – you know, and I'd already bought the tickets online, so it wasn't That's really ridiculous. an option. Yeah. Tickets. Two tickets, huh? Two tickets. Two yep. tickets. Me and the girlfriend went down. Wait, what? What? A girlfriend? Yes. Do tell. You already have mentioned this on the show. Have I? On the live show? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. You, you, this isn't. This is not groundbreaking news. <laughs> she, uh, she is delightful. She's very, very wonderful. Great girl. Um, so, couldn't be a bigger fan of her. And you know, she shockingly so why tolerates you? me. That's a great question. Have right. uh, I think it's the I think it's uh, the fact that I'm technically a bad boy now that I'm on the NSA <laughs> and Homeland oh, yeah. Security's list. It's got to be that a whole was, bad boy thing. When we had lunch in Orlando, that was all she could talk about. Oh, I bet. I bet. How hard did she laugh at that? Shockingly, she was like, "That's kind of severe," <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Because she was like, "What all did you do to that? Like, what all did you do to him?" And I'm like, "Well, like, yeah, like I made embarrassing memes, but it was never." It was the point was to generate attention, never to make people think that he had sex with Justin Bieber. <laughs> you know, I mean, because then I would have spent much more time making it look professional, <laughs> rather rather than you know making you you know it looked so. It was just a. It was a. As Aaron Ewart would say, it was a shit meme. <laughs> you know, so I didn't want people to think it was real. But uh, yeah, she I, was I, like, "Is this? Did you do something like really to deserve this?" And I was like, "You know." No, you, you probably uh, not. No. I don't think I'd done anything lately that was bad, um, <laughs> you know. And then like, I I don't think I'd done like you know any of your relationships in the past. I'd ever done anything to like alienate the girl. I don't think. No, th- no. Honestly, had had I known that there were actually going to be ramifications of any type, I wouldn't have done it at all. I have the receipt for the thirty-seven dollars I spent replacing my <laughs> toiletries that um, we will. 
that I'm just going to keep and hold over your head because I don't want it to be repaid. Listeners, I want it to be my leverage every time. Go to wearelibertarians.com, hit PayPal, $37 to help refund. No, 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 no. Listeners do not because I want to have the high ground on this <laughs> and use this repeatedly as um, that I, hey. for, I forewent my vengeance. <laughs> you know, we're only $2 away from the last time I checked on the Never Bittner t-shirt. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Every dollar spent on a Never Bittner t-shirt adds a dollar to uh, what that charge is going to be to repay my toiletries. Uh, I did something for Jeremiah recently and he goes, ah, this is the first time your friendship has ever not cost me money. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. That snarky little bastard. I know. So, well, I do apologize. If, I, it was. It is all in good fun. I honestly, it was. I had no idea that it would actually, like, there would be ramifications to my jackassery. It was It was all in good fun. All is well. I am still a known great American. And so yeah. it, there are, other than, uh, other than maybe having to not brush my teeth one night, it's no biggie. Now, 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 TSA, NSA, we know you're listening. Uh, it was just some tomfoolery. Yes, we should take national security more seriously, but we're libertarians. Those toxic meme boys ruining the security. Oh, we we love America. Look at our look at our uh, look at the the table cover. The table yeah, I was going to mention. It's covered in flags. We love America. Very patriotic all of a sudden. So. I will say that the TSA is a joke, though. Why? So, because they're terrible. Yeah, I agree oh, with that. Should, you should share with Chris what happened when we were on our way back. What? What about when we were, our way back? We were all raring to go to opt out. Oh, yeah. We were, like, super ready to opt out. There were little kids screaming everywhere. It was a nightmare for people that had kids. And Brett and I are just standing there, and they're like, uh, no, you come through this line. So we didn't even go through the body scanner. They just put us through Wow. the metal detector. It, mu- it must have been my libertarian shirt that I was wearing. Right. Probably. Yeah. They've been harassed enough by all now, libertarians leaving. Now, I hope I haven't now. made a bad impression on Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Gregory Lynn's. What was that? Have I, have I, I hope I haven't made a bad impression on your girlfriend. No, because no. we've never gotten a chance to talk. She doesn't know how wonderful I am. <laughs> she doesn't. Know, no, no. She hears me talk about you guys all the time. All right. Yeah. I mean, well, she, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. No, but I, 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 I tell my, I tell the worst things about my friends to their face, and then I. But once you know, I podcasts. am your biggest defender. I am your biggest defender <laughs> to other people. You know, you know how I am. You know, know. how you're my thought. You know, my thoughts on the subject is that. You know, I only am the one that gets to talk bad about my friends. If you dare <laughs> do right. it, I'm burning yeah. down the entire house right. and yeah. making sure you are never allowed at any event I'm at again. If it makes you feel better, you made my afternoon. Because when you when you checked in at CBS <laughs> that night, I thought that was a joke. No, the next morning. The next morning, whatever it was, I honestly, I thought that was the funniest comeback you could have had. <laughs> I had no idea you were serious. That was all real. Speaking of CBS, they must have known that the Libertarians were coming uh-huh. because the well, – no, Walgreens, sorry. Walgreens. Walgreens must have known because they had fedoras on sale, <laughs> two, for, two, for ten. Oh, two for ten. Two for ten. Two for ten. Chloe and I had our little milady pose <laughs> pictures I think we shared with you guys as we both – we took pictures of each other. It was fantastic. It's it very was, good. It was a good time. Proud of you guys, mm. all of you. You did a great job. Special thanks to uh, Christy Avery. Uh, I'm. Uh, I failed to mention earlier that I am talking to the Christy Avery microphone, uh, which Ooh. sounds magnificent now. Uh, and Christy did yeoman's work down at the national convention. She took down, was it like fifteen hundred flyers and passed them out and put them on tables. Yeah, uh, she did a great job. Yeah, and we gained like five hundred new Facebook likes. Uh, I haven't looked at the subscriber count, but, uh, yeah, she really helped us promote down there. Uh, I couldn't get down there. It was the 100th running of the Indianapolis 500. Uh, that is – Priority. Yeah, but that's like the <clears> – <throat> that's like a family event. Like that's the one thing that my dad and brother and I do together ever. And uh, so I wasn't going to miss that in the 100th. And it, w- it was – man, early in the day, race day was – that was a great day. I had a great day until like 4 o'clock. It was a great day. After that, that not, was about when I think my day took a turn as well. Yeah, you want to compare? <laughs> <laughs> so no, no, I think everybody's seen the reaction to what happened. Yeah. So yeah, it would with James Weeks. Yeah. Yep. Thank God my reaction wasn't on C-SPAN. <laughs> <laughs> that would be to my a GIF too. wouldn't have been nearly enough. No. Yeah, but that's okay. That's uh, all right. We liberty on. Yep, we do. Onward and upward. So. 
so yes, I could not make it. Uh, I, I I had few people text and say, "Hey, are you here? I want to meet you." And I wish I could have gone. I will I will go to the next one in two years from now in New Orleans. I've always wanted to go to New Orleans, so I'll make a going to make a real trip out of it. Um, but I I, I heard people were coming up to if somebody found out at, at Liberty and Chill this Friday. Dorn said, uh, "Yeah, when people find out that I'm from Indiana." People start talking about we are libertarians. They ask if you know Greg. They ask if you know Spangle. Like apparently we're a hot ticket item in the libertarian world, which surprises me. I, mean, I I was very not not that I don't think Wall is great because I think it is, but I just well, wasn't I I was surprised that there are that many people from around the country that listen. I mean we hung out with Travis McCurry. Yep, yep. From South Carolina. Your cousin. My cousin, who's we're, awesome. He's not really my cousin. Oh. I just made him sit next to me. <laughs> at one a of the debates, times, yeah. A couple, yeah, and I basically was like, "Hey, pretend you're my cousin." So I like that she, the, the wall listener, was the least creepy one. That's that's progress, Greg. Well, I feel like that. You know, we sh- we uh, I guess um, creep shame enough of the <laughs> radical caucus that they aren't our listener base. And I feel like you know, with Brett being an established figure in the party, and then you being an established figure in the party, and then me, I guess, being a scumbag Republican that oh, is wh- sort, of, sort of tolerable to the status libertarian. Now group. that you're on a list, you're uh, an icon. Schindler's? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, uh, uh, no. No, but it is, it's humbling because it's like you said, it's, it's shocking that people would dedicate their time to listen to our opinions because, yeah. you know, we aren't, you know, we aren't nationally prominent uh, authorities. You know, we do this as a hobby, not as a career, but although pa- politics is our passion and liber- libertarianism is our passion, yeah, I mean, um, it's humbling that people would think, or we uh, produce something that, that they find worthy of their time and look forward to. Yeah, because it's just this little thing that we do once a week, and we enjoy it, and it's, it's our hobby. hobby you yeah, know? yeah. It's, it's nice to get together with friends and talk about the issues in the press and in the liberty movement, and then at the same time joke about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's but it it is it's it's great to hear that people across the country are listening. You know, we see it in the numbers, but it's it's nice to put faces to names. It is always you know yeah. come up and say hi. Yeah, so yeah, um, when you when you see these guys, uh, Brett and Chloe go out far more than Greg and I do. Uh, you know, join the Facebook group. Go to wearelibertarians dot com. You can join the group and meet other listeners. Uh, if you listen, interact with us. Get on the Facebook. Get on the Facebook group. Get on the Twitter. I mean, uh, everybody else is approachable. Me, not as much, but uh, oh, you, you know, are the king of all. I am the president of all libertarians. I have very little time to. Uh, to devote to my subjects, I am busy running libertarianism and <laughs> and uh, my sad, pitiful life. So, <laughs> well, it is. I mean, it's nice when you hear that, though, that it is not sad and pitiful because this does have opportunity cost for anything you do, because mm-hmm. uh, it takes time away from other elements of your life. And so, to know and then that when it's, people listen, they hold it against you. Yeah, they do. They will hold it against you. <laughs> they will. I mean, it is true. There is an opportunity cost, but we still do it anyway because one, we like it. Yep. But two, it's uh, you know, we make a choice. No, I will. I will say this. This is a genuine Chris Spangle. Let me put on my uh, serious voice here for Chris Spangle, uh, ladies. Yeah, I know you guys. Uh, as <laughs> as I, you know, as I reflect how many changes I've gone through over the last two and a half years, um, and how hard life has been for two years, as as I've gone through, I went to the doctor on Friday, and the doctor said uh, I hadn't been to the doctor since like 2009. And so he was just asking me, you know, hey, what have you been up to? How are things going? And I said, well, things have been this, this, this happened, this happened, this happened. And he he just like stood stood there and looked at me and he goes, okay, so like on the stress scale, you've had literally everything happen to you in the top like seven with the exception of a death of of a loved one. And you're doing remarkably well. And I said, thanks. Thanks a lot. And the majority of the reason is we are libertarians, and it's because not not just because of the listeners, not just because this gives me something to do. You know, I, when I'm having a bad day, I get to play with all my equipment. I just pull out my equipment and start playing with it, Chloe. What is that a euphemism for there, Chris? Uh, uh, my wiener. And, you know, most importantly, it is the relationships that I built with Greg, first and foremost. Greg is my best friend. Yeah, and, I, and Chris is mine. And, and I do, I do uh, regret putting you through like if if i thought it was actually going to cause you harm and you were mad i would i would actually legitimately apologize oh yeah i do but um because greg has been uh my most important friend over the last two years especially in keeping me sane and you know the 20 other people that do this you know i was texting with gina the other day saturday maya was over and maya and i had a very um 
difficult heart-to-heart conversation on creating Maya, a podcast that you can get in iTunes or whatever. Um, but the friendships that I have forged out of this group of people have kept me alive because I have been, you know, I'm not trying to oversell it or be over dramatic. I mean, it has been very difficult going through a divorce, going through major life shifts. Um, Doing this publicly while trying to grow. Yeah, and uh, trying to figure out how to be a person. I'm a raging codependent, and I didn't know that till a year ago, and I'm trying to figure out how to be a grown-up in public because part of being codependent is attention-seeking as a way to cope. So a podcast is a terrible decision yeah, if you're trying it's to it's an like, enabling decision <laughs> right so uh so yeah uh and, and you know i i had a breakup this week and uh it has been extremely difficult and sad and my we are libertarians friends have really been there for me and uh it's great thank you now chloe's touching me it's great uh thank you Libertarian <laughs> intensifies I knew, <laughs> I, knew, I knew she liked me <laughs> like so, yeah, it's just been such a great experience over these last four, four and a half years to do this and to get to know so many of you. And so to the people that came up, to everybody from Indiana, to the people that came up and talked to the, to the cast uh, or have sent us notes over the years, and especially the people who have donated, you know, th- this equipment that we've got is is being built out on uh, donations from the audience just because you like what we do. Right. If we weren't here, you'd miss us. and we're gonna- We would miss you. 100 percent and so we've got a couple of computers that were donated to us this week we're gonna uh, i'm working on a live stream i'm working on a phone bank so we can take phone calls so we're just trying to expand out our capabilities to do this bigger and better for for us and for you and so we want to thank you so when you donate when you um buy equipment or when you just send in a note you know you're you're contributing to something that is incredibly impactful in our lives it is meaningful to us and hopefully what we do is meaningful to you. It surprises us when it is. Um, I know that Maya, the, the Creating Maya show, you know, as, as influential, I think, as this show has been in the lives of uh, uh, several libertarians, maybe dozens, possibly a hundred libertarians across over the last four years, the Creating Maya show um, has been huge in normalizing people's experiences with trans people. You know, if you know, it's like the Milk reference, the movie Milk. You know, if you know a gay person, then you're less, uh, once you have, you're less ignorant of gay people. You, Your cousin, your brother, your sister, your mom is gay. You have less fear and uh, biases, biases uh, towards gay people. And it's the same with the Creating Maya show. The people who listen to that understand Maya's transition. They understand, I think, after this last episode, why Maya is so angry. Um, and the emotional hell that it is to be her. Um, but, yeah, and and this group of podcasts and people has allowed us to do that. So just want to thank you guys. It's really been a meaningful couple months to, to everybody. And the convention, post-convention episode with, with what you guys have, have shared with us in Orlando was very meaningful. So thank you very much. Anytime. Um, thanks, Chloe. Chloe, it's, you're take all the credit, Chloe. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll just take all of it. That's Bittner's job. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm what, trying to upstage him. Right, assisting me at it's, her own pace. It's yep. uh, the 48 laws of power. Number one is never outshine the master. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. If you haven't read Robert Greene, Chloe, you need to read Robert Greene. It's life changing stuff. <clears throat> so we don't we don't necessarily have a topic. This is um, this is more of a recap of what has happened in Orlando. So we've talked a little bit about your personal experiences, and we can kind of finish up there. I mean, we'll, we'll kind of go down the table uh, and, and wrapping up our, our, you know, what our perception of Orlando was like. We had the special episode from Orlando. Uh, so, Chloe, this was your first one. Other than the Creepitarians, I mean, what was kind of your the, – the vibe of the convention? Um, I really enjoyed the amount of energy that was there. Um, the media attention was really cool. I mean, just seeing crews from ABC and MSNBC and CNBC and, you know, New Everybody York Times. I mean, everyone was there. Um, so that was really cool. Um, I talked to a bunch of people that, um, were reporters or producers or just, you know, cameramen that were just kind of wandering around looking at all the vendor tables. Cause I was there 
um, with the advocates selling merchandise and giving the quiz out to people. Um, but I just thought that was really neat, and I've never been to any national political convention ever. Um, and I think regardless of party, it might be kind of cool to go to another one, just because to feel that amount of energy, it kind of reminded me of um, being at, like, a Colts game or being at yeah. finals night for Miss Indiana when you're, mm -hmm. like, in – that audience. There's a the, and, there's I a mean, reference that everybody can really grasp oh onto, yeah. Chloe. Finals night well, at Miss Indiana. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it, it sounds an awful lot like what somebody wrote uh, after they got back from Orlando. Mm -hmm. And talking about energy and was that, events. Was that somebody named Brett Bittner? It, it was. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. Somebody <laughs> happened to copy edit it. <laughs> seemed to have lifted a couple things for themselves as, and presented them as I agreed thought. with everything that you're saying. <laughs> Some say there coffee and lifted, some said made it great again. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll go with the latter. Um, but, yeah, it, it was just really cool. It was really cool to be there. It was tiring um, at some points just because, I mean, I would get to the table, people are coming out, and it's hard for me, and I'm trying to, like, find this balance of um, being better at, like, being, like, on throughout the day and, like, actively listening and, like, trying to have conversations with people and, you know, just getting better about that. Um, so what's your deal? So what's your deal exactly? Right. Um, you want to take the quiz? <laughs> you want to take the quiz? No, is a couple it, quiz cards. Is it true that you guys did not have an OPH kit out at Orlando? No, we didn't. We didn't. Either. There was that was a controversy. That was not our focus. Our focus no. was uh, was helping grow the advocates and getting to know some of the people that support us. And um, we we ran some specials on books to help drive that. Um, we had a couple giveaways. You know, we continue to do the Freedom is My Favorite F-Word sticker. Uh, we continue to do that promotion, but we also unveiled a new sticker that Chloe uh, came up with um, that is absolutely wonderful <laughs> that's kind of leaning towards the ladies yep. and uh, and Star Child. What does um, it say? It says uh, – Is it a rape whistle? No. No. <laughs> no this is actually no. really, really nice. You weirdos. No. No, I'm saying, like, you know, as protection for the Ladies of Liberty <laughs> – no. Okay, I just thought it might be helpful. But I'll keep that in mind for next mm -hmm. time when we have a brainstorming session. Um, no, it's a white sticker, and it says um, Lover of Liberty and Lipstick. And it's written so, like, it looks like you literally, like, took a tube of lipstick and, and like, wrote it out. Nice. It's, it's, it, it's really cute. It's an awesome sticker. And a lot awesome of people really sticker. liked it. So. It's adorbs. It's totally adorable. And um, if you go to my Instagram, which is just at Chloe underscore Nagnos, you can totally see one. And uh, maybe order one eventually. So totally. apparently know. we built a self-promotional platform. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was your first clue? <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole point of this. <laughs> Where do you think I learn it from? Yeah. For those of you who are just listening and not watching the live stream, she was pointing at me. Right. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. I try. Hashtag never bitter. <laughs> never bitter. It was just really cool and humbling to have people that come up and recognize Brett and I. Um, not only just for like wall stuff, which was like crazy, but for stuff that we do too. Right. Um, I mean, you guys are the biggest, I would argue the most influential of the libertarian organizations within, I mean, as far as identifying and uh, forming and ushering into the party, new libertarians, um, from hell, virtually every Avenue. Um, and so, you know, I, I would I agree with your decision about that purpose, you know, what the point was, because. Offering the quiz at a libertarian convention seems it's not very much fun. redundant, no. yeah. Yeah. right? And, you know, the last thing we want to do is turn it into – you know, we don't want the national party to turn into something where it's a dick measuring contest of how libertarian you are. It's about yeah. – we've reached – we've crossed that threshold of trying to, you know, trying to maintain purity where we're trying to create big tent libertarianism. You know, I, I commend you for it and sticking to your guns on that because that could not be more important and a better thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I mean, what we do here is it's we're trying to be nonpartisan. You know, we're sure. trying to, um, and we are as well. And so yeah, same right. with the advocates. You guys yeah. are a discovery organization, and that's mm -hmm. what the focus has to be. Except when you're in an event like that, it's about you know, it's about more than that. It isn't about discovery at that point. It's about mm -hmm. we've arrived, and we're going to take this organization forward from here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next step for us is actually going to be something that hopefully we'll be able to talk about here in a couple episodes, where we talk about the what's after the quiz. We're very excited with what we saw today, and yeah, it's looking really, I, really good. I haven't. I'm. I'm. I know what you're talking about. I haven't seen the videos, but yeah, I think it's going to be hugely influential for libertarianism once that is finished. Um, little Brett Bittner, 
Yes, sir. So this is your, what, 10th? This was my fourth consecutive convention. Okay. Um, I've From St. Louis to now, uh, I have been to all of them. And this one was uh, really, really different. Um, hmm. Really? Really different. And a lot of what Chloe talked about, and I joked about her lifting some of these thoughts, um, but seriously, it was a very energetic, um, very exciting time. There was a buzz from the time that we set things up Thursday through even the end of the LNC meeting that I took part in. Um, and even while we were at the airport, we had people that were excited about Gary Johnson. They were My excited about was. the – it was amazing to see how many people were, were just interested. And a lot of it had to do with the contested convention, you know, the contested nomination. A lot of it had to do with just the fact that it's the, the biggest turnout there's ever been at a Libertarian National Convention. Um, I believe at the time of the presidential votes – to let you know what a libertarian nerd I am, uh -huh. I actually went back and watched some of the C-SPAN coverage um, because Crystal has become a, a crazy fangirl <laughs> of Nick Sarwark. Yeah. Uh -huh. And she wanted she wanted to show me all these things during the second day of the convention that was on C-SPAN that she basically sat around and watched on C-SPAN. Right. She wanted to show me all of the things that really impressed her about him. <laughs> um, but That's the, cute. the overall – Oh, so so that that vote um, right before the presidential nomination, there were 997 eligible people eligible to vote, and the way that the convention is designed is that there would be a thousand um, maximum. Wow! And wow. then uh, oh, that was that was about as good as my voice crack on C-SPAN. Uh, hello, <laughs> I love Liberty guys. <laughs> Hi, girls. It's our time. Um, but but seeing how many different perspectives there were, seeing the energy around uh, the Freedom Ninjas that were supporting Austin Peterson, uh, the Voice and Exit surreal performance art surrounding John McAfee's campaign, the excitement over. Uh, with the very pure message of Daryl Perry, and you guys didn't see it, but Dr. Feldman, I mean, he really had an opportunity to have a Bednarik moment at the convention because it just seemed like everything was hitting for him. I mean, everything just went so well, and, you know, when he ran around the room after getting enough tokens, he ran around the convention hall after he got enough tokens to be in the debates, um, and it was like he'd won – a spot on the floor of the Price is Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, he was running around like crazy. To give you an example of how much he, he had, so last night um, for my girlfriend's mother's birthday, we had dinner, and her dad was like a huge Feldman fan after watching it on Seats Fan <laughs> and was like chanting, Feldman, 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 and loved the rap. <laughs> yeah, the rap was awesome. Um, you want to tell him what happened after breakfast? The story with the pedestrian? Oh, okay. So, yeah, that was actually before breakfast. Um, so the one the one speaker that I wanted to hear was uh, Tim Moen. He's the leader of the Libertarian Party of Canada. Yes, kick his ass out. Yes, and, and I, I'm Build not wall, that wall just got ten feet higher. Gotta go. I'm Gotta not, go back. I'm not joking. I'm not trolling Chris. I promise. This guy really is the leader of the Libertarian Party of Canada. Um, and right before we and this was Sunday morning, I had been up very very late Wednesday night and Thursday night and Friday night. And Saturday night and gotten up early every morning. But this was the morning that I got up at 630 to make sure I went to this breakfast. Mm -hmm. And Tim Owen was the speaker. And uh, right as we were about to get started, somebody came into the ballroom where he was speaking and asked if there was anybody with medical training. And mm -hmm. I knew that in his real life, outside of his political life, that Tim Owen is a firefighter paramedic in Canada, in Alberta. Right. Um, because we're friends on Facebook and I followed kind of his story and getting to know him. And I, I happened to see that Dr. Feldman was in the room as well. And so um, there was apparently a pedestrian versus car hit and run <laughs> incident right outside yeah. uh, the the exhibition hall on the back side of the convention hotel. And they were looking for people to help administer first. Libertarians do when people are in need. Um, both Tim and Dr. Feldman broke into a run. Nah. Granted, Tim is literally being introduced to speak. 
um, they both broke into a run to go out and assist the person that had been hit by the car. Wow. And it, it was it, – it's exactly what we – what I talk about a lot in walking the walk and not outsourcing responsibility. That's literally what they were doing. They went – they used the training that they had to be – to go and help somebody that was in need. And I, And we talked about it – I think it was the night before in the debate where it was mentioned that, you know, it doesn't matter what's happening. If you see somebody that's in need, you see – a kid drowning, you could be on your on your way to your wedding in your wedding dress or your tuxedo, but you see a kid that's drowning, you're not gonna you know, you're gonna stop what you're doing and you're gonna help them. Right. And this was an amazing example of that actually happening. You know, there are small things that, that people can do. You know, they see somebody on the side of the road that needs their tire changed or, you know, they're they're out of gas and they've got a gas can, they go and help somebody out, or, you know, somebody's been you know, they're they've been sleeping in their car in a in a parking lot because they didn't have any gas and you give them a tank so they can get where they're going. You know, those are little things that people can do. But this was a, an excellent example of people who had the ability that immediately responded, didn't think about what was happening. Dr. Feldman should have been campaigning. Tim Moen should have been speaking. And instead, they they did what libertarians do, um, and they were helping people in need. Right. I mean, that's the that's what gives – I mean, I don't know if you probably feel the same way. That's what gives me great hope for it. Yeah, Absolutely. There's a human – like in uh, we're not – there's a disaversion, I guess, to when witnessing human suffering, and time after time, it's you know answering that call to arms in the absence of anyone else being there to do it. Yeah, so I, I've I'm on a uh, oversharing. It's not necessarily oversharing because I want to make a point. Um, I'm not. She like leaned away when no, I said oversharing. I'm just trying I'm, to like give you some space. I'm not gonna. I wasn't sure if you were gonna put your elbow yeah, out yeah, or I don't know. know. I'm not gonna overshare that on you. Um, <clears throat> so I. Uh, I went to an Al-Anon meeting, so that is the the meeting that you go to when you're the loved one of an alcoholic, and it is a support group. And I went last night with a friend, and uh, you know I have a loved one that's an alcoholic or was that impacted me significantly, that made me a codependent. And so you know I felt like ah, I need to go to a meeting. So I went to a meeting last night, and I shared my story. I'm sitting in a room of people who are. 35 years older than I am. I mean, the majority of them are, are near 70 or older, uh, and there's probably 10 of them. And uh, I have no idea. I have no, I know nothing about them other than what they shared before, which was their experience. And uh, in sharing my story, at the end of the meeting, there was a massive outpouring of empathy and care and love and support and you're not alone i have those same emotions i know i look older than you but you're in the right place because this is exactly what i go through with my loved one you know and and i just walked away from that going wow okay this is the, this is one of the most fundamental principles of hum, of, of libertarianism is that when we tell our stories when we are vulnerable uh because in a government system, you just go and you punch a button and you get the thing out of the machine. You know, it's transactional. Just, it's transactional. Right, there's yeah. there's no human element to it. But in a libertarian society, there is uh, there is a a human element. You have to tell your story. You have to be vulnerable. You have to share of yourself with other people to get help. And when you do that, you have a richer life. You have people that don't know you caring for you because you're just another human being. And after I finished my story, I said, and I'm done. And the lady next to me goes, welcome to the human race. <laughs> and I walked away from that going, not, not only did I feel amazing because I had gotten the poison out and I had you know, made a few new friends and I had a new support system. Um, I walked away going, see, this is why libertarianism can work. Because when we share our stories, when we are vulnerable, when we, you know, are in need, and other human beings see suffering in a person, they rise up to the occasion and help. Plain and simple. So that that, you know, I think that that's part of what Rupert's story at the last We're Libertarians Live was about. You know, <laughs> it is seeing your fellow man it, like as a fellow man. Yeah, don't don't worry that if you get rid of government there there will be a safety net there and is. it's us it might it might <laughs> and not. we will do a much better job than Absolutely. what we have right now yeah i'll tell you um do you guys know bart gotta 
He's the chairman of Vanderburg County Party? No. I have. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you had lunch we with Bart. Met him. Yeah, you met Bart. So Bart's uh, amazing. Like, I've never met anybody like him who lives liber- – I mean, he is amazing in what he does. So he actually tried to get um, – the Libertarian, or no, let's see, what was it? There's a thing called Keep Evansville Beautiful that we participated in Saturday morning where people come out with the mayor and pick up trash. He does this on Saturdays alone with his kids to teach them there's nothing wrong with going around and picking up trash and, like, just stopping on the side of the interstate to go and pick it up, and that's their duty as citizens, and that's what spreads libertarianism is that example of living it where we don't need to wait for a government organization designed at collecting trash to arise. Yep. We need to take the responsibility and that self-ownership of our communities as well and extend that out. Um, and just time and time again, I mean, he does that over and over without asking for the thanks or trying to start a government-funded coalition or not-for-profit. He just will pull over on the side of the road if he sees trash on a Saturday, take his kids and say, hey, we're going to go clean it up. And he tried to do it with the parks in, in Evansville. He wanted to take the, <laughs> yeah. the people to take over the parks. Great, that was a great story. You know, calling out the mayor as a coward for not <laughs> being able, you know, and getting the mayor to respond to it by saying, I am not a coward. <laughs> All because he went out and is collect, you know, wanted to take care of it himself and take that responsibility on himself. When he's, you know, he already works a job and is involved in the Libertarian Party, which you know, you guys all know. Yeah. That mm-hmm. is an enormous commitment of time. It is, and it can be soul-sucking. Yeah. Because it is never easy. There's nothing easy about organizing Libertarians and keeping your emotions aside and not letting that get you down. And so it's to still have time to live liberty as well as having the time to go ahead and clean up our communities and take ownership – it's you know it's impressive and that's the example I know I never reach. I talk about living liberty, but I rarely do. Yeah. And you know it was nice to well actually it wasn't nice because it was a reminder of how crappy of libertarian I am. <laughs> but it's nice to know that that's the standard that is being lived and followed. Right. And it gives me hope for you know the we can convince people we don't need these institutions designed to relieve them of their guilt or to let them just throw dollars away and make outsource it an, that responsibility. Yeah, that's make what it we an, keep doing. In human yep. experience. So back to the convention. So so, so back away from uh, reality. Let's get back to the Libertarian <laughs> Convention. Yeah. So no more feels, just stripping naked bearded men. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's talk about that. Okay. Let's talk about it. Uh, I was fit to be tied over. Uh, so I I last the last two Saturdays, not this past Saturday. Yeah. No, this last Saturday. Um, no, not this last Saturday, but the two Saturdays before that. Uh, we have a feed called Radio, Radio, Raw Audio Politics and the Gary Johnson for President feed where I take uh, basically YouTube videos, rip the audio, and then put them in a podcast feed so we can all keep up with what, what he's saying, what he's doing, um, and, and as well as other debates, other speeches. Uh, and I, I was just going through a bunch of different things, and I was pulling audio from the National Convention and putting that up in the Raw Audio Politics feed, and I listened to the chairs debate. And Mark Rutherford did an amazing job, friend of ours, been on the show. Uh, Nick Sarwark, friend of the show, been on been on the, in the feed. He's he's a great guy. Well, uh, he was our friend until he met Aaron Ewart. Yep. <laughs> Who must have him uh, for some county chair in rural Indiana? Brett Pajonas, who I think has done a great job with the Libertarian Party of Nevada. I know him uh, somewhat. I, I don't know him as well as I know the other two. Um, I don't know Charles Peralo that well, but he seemed to have some ideas. He actually ended up not running for chair. Oh, okay. He, and, he saw that there were – I think he saw the writing on the wall that somebody who's not been involved in leadership, not been involved in his state, couldn't really become chair of a national party. Gotcha. And then there was James Weeks, who in that debate was full of nakedness. R- well, there's well, a radical, not yet. No radical bumper sticker talk. I mean, it just wasn't he libertarianism wasn't, stripped raw. Right. So there is a caucus within the Libertarian Party called the Radical Caucus, and it is a group of people who are are by and large anarchists and who. Um, to the black and yellow libertarian. Yeah, and they have uh, their definite view, and there's definitely a block, and James Weeks was their candidate for chair, and he was saying everything he could to try and maintain their support, but not really offering any valid ideas for the party that, that he, he wasn't even coming close to matching the the top three, I'll say. No, leadership requires a vision. And a plan. Well, right. here yeah. – okay, so I do have to share something about the Radical Caucus. They did endorse Nick for chair, 
so it wasn't like he was sure. put up to it by the caucus, like James was. Fair, fair, I, I believe that it had point. more to do with the fraud perpetrated on the party, right? To have the to have the incident that happened Sunday. So, James, before we get into, it, I need to make sure we're not shiny. For yeah. <laughs> no, you look white. great. You look beautiful. the The resolution's pretty low. Now. The libertarianism is best viewed in low resolution. Yes. James Weeks proved that. So this this guy is – he looks like me. He's chubby. He's ob- obese. He's very ugly. Uh, he is a scourge among men. He has scabies. I heard he has sex with his cousin. Jeez. Um, not, none of that is true. None of that is true. It, it, well, he is overweight, but that's not a He's crime. a big guy. Right. I'm a big guy. Greg's a big guy. You're a big guy. No biggie. Chloe's a big guy. Be yep. fair. Yeah. I am. Don't microaggress. All right. Now, don't – where's your iron? Don't button? categorize her. What, what happened, <laughs> Brett Bittner? <laughs> so Sunday, we're in the midst of the nominating speeches for the chair candidates. And uh, Brett Pajunas goes first. He goes through. He has his folks that are rah, rah, Brett. And, you know, you, got, you have several minutes to speak. I don't remember which – which amount for which office and which race? Because it's I can never keep it all straight in my head. I'm glad that we have somebody that does and has it written down somewhere so that we can keep it all straight. But um, it got to his time, and he didn't have anybody on stage with him. Usually you have people speaking in support of you. Uh, he didn't have anybody up there with him, and he said, you know, we've we've been – it's time for a little fun, I think, is is what he said right before he turned the music on uh-huh. on his cell phone and placed it by the microphone. And I was down with that. I'm down with the dancing. I'm down with having fun. I mean, if 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 I get to the point where I'm not having fun, then I'm gonna quit. Yeah, like that's this is fun for us, so that's why we do weird libertarians. And if it's not fun, then we're gonna quit. Exactly. Right. And you know, I have fun in the boardroom. I have fun with what I do with the advocates. I have fun when I, you know, people invite me to speak. Brad Bittner, fun in the boardroom, fun in the bedroom. High five. Chloe. No. Come on, Chloe. No. No. You know what I'm talking about, Brett Bittner. <laughs> no. So high five. <laughs> so yeah, great success. At, at, at the point where I'm no longer having fun is when I'm going to be done. Right. Um, there have been times where that, that has been tried, and I have been tried, but I'm still having fun, so I'm still here. It hasn't stopped being fun yet. It hasn't although been... that date doesn't look all that far off. <laughs> Some days it looks very close. Some, Some days, days it looks like it's today. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Other days, not so much. It's usually um, when you're on We Are Libertarians that it tends to look yeah, right around the corner. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, gosh. What's I, the point? Yeah. <laughs> you guys. Um, so we get – he's up there, and he's dancing, and I'm cool. I'm clapping along. And then the tie comes off, and I'm like, okay, please don't I've let seen this, this be – SNL skit. Yeah. Please don't let this be the, the Chris Farley, Chippendales, Patrick Swayze skit. And then the shirt comes off, and I'm like, oh, it is. Yeah. And that's when you see me react on the C-SPAN feed where I just turn my head. And I call it Sabening because it's exactly what Nick Saban does when he sees that the center does something dumb. And I, I, I – Roll yes, tide. That's why I said Sabening instead of my guy because <laughs> you're wearing the shirt. Yes. Um, so when the center hikes the ball over the quarterback's head by 20 yards and he's got to chase it and fall on it, you know, you have the head coach and he's just, he's shaking his head. He's about to yell into the headset and he's about to throw the clipboard, but the, he just turns around, he puts his hands on his hips and he's just like, I can't believe this happened. That was me. And then I had to, I even had to look back to make sure it was actually happening. Soul sucking disgust. And then I, you know, and then I walked away and. It continued for another couple of minutes, and I'm just thinking the whole time, awesome. <laughs> you can't wait to ask, be asked to comment on this one. Because I knew that's exactly what was happening, and it happened when I was on Abdul's show. It happened. I had about 100 people within it, the next 24 hours that said that they saw me on the news, whether it was MSNBC or O'Reilly or Fox News or just saw the C-SPAN coverage. So I – and. I had a couple of people who captured it and shared it with me so that I, we could create that wonderful gif. There's a gif at the We Are Libertarians Twitter. Yep. It's awesome. It is. Unexpectedly and repulsed Bittner. <laughs> <laughs> Repulsing at his own pace. Yep. Um, but, Whoop. you know, 
<laughs> at the end of the day, I, I don't know that it necessarily helps or hurts libertarianism, helps or hurts the Libertarian Party. Um, it's an unnecessary talking point for our detractors. But you know what? I'm, I'm embracing a lot more of the no more excuses, mm -hmm. and I believe that that is just going to be another excuse that people have. It's going to be, you know, I can't vote for your guy because it means Hillary wins, or I can't vote for your guy because it means Trump wins, or I can't vote for your guy because it means Pence wins, or I can't vote for your guy because it means Greg win. You know what? I'm tired of hearing it. I'm tired of hearing the excuses. Like, and honestly, if something like that yeah. is going to be what turns you off, then we never had you anyway. Uh, right. You yeah. were never going to you were you were going to you were looking for something. Mm -hmm. You were looking for an excuse to not participate. You were looking for an excuse not to jump on board. You were never going to be on board. And so I, I don't know that it, it really hurts anything. Yeah, it's yeah. a convenient out. Right. So yeah. uh, Joe Houtman, the state chair of Indiana, said, you know, uh, Dave Berglund, I think it was Dave, used to walk up to people and say when they give him that excuse, go, all right, well, when you're done being a pussy, uh, then let me know. And we can we can uh, finally win. I'm not sure that's, that's, that's the not approach. that's not quite what happened with with. And I don't know that it was Berglund, but it was something about how well in, in my heart I'm a libertarian, and right. I think it was actually Aaron Russo, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Said that sounds right. When well, when you're liber when it gets to your balls, let me know. Oh, okay. I think that's the actual like introduction that a lot of people have when you grow some balls i when, think is actually what he said not when you're done being a pussy that was gary johnson oh. you're right yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well and he was talking about trump so. uh breaking news you, you've seen by now i'm sure on your smartphone uh hillary clinton is officially the democratic nominee oh california oh, results yep and officially beat bernie sanders so um uh, yeah so weeks i was surprised at how far this strip tease thing went and it was here on all the local TV stations, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and you it, it, it is. You're right. It's an excuse. Well, they're just not taken seriously. They're just and it's Republicans trying to, like, foment some sort of lack of seriousness, which couldn't be further from the truth. And it just is them trying to d diminish the credibility of, of an actual force in politics in 2016. And, and I would like to point something out, even though I am kind of a scumbag Republican. Um, the Megacon convention mm -hmm. was going on at the same time at the Rosen Center. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember what news outlet it was, but, you know, Megacon going on. There's people walking around in Cosplay. costumes, yep. you know, just looking all crazy. And I believe there was a news outlet I heard from someone that came over that had a camera pointed at some of the people that were in costumes and said, oh, yeah, these are the kinds of people that attend the Libertarian National Convention. Uh -uh. And it's one of those things where it's like, look, OK, if you don't necessarily agree with this political party, like, don't go out of your way to try to discredit it oh, but it's in any way. Here. You know, oh, of never, course, of course. A, but, you know, a a lovable side, uh, a lovable um well, like your little cousin. Yeah, the yeah. non-threatening, oh, aren't they entertaining? You know, exactly. but we're beyond yeah. the laugh at us. Right? Well, yeah, we're at the yeah. stage now where we're, we're a perceived real threat. And they're mm -hmm. going to start fighting. The, the two yep. major parties have elected the two most unlikable and highest, uh, highest un, uh, unfavorability ratings in American history as nominees of the two major parties. Right. The Never Trump movement's real. The Libertarians have nominated the only executive um, or who's proven executive of a governing institution in American politics right now, two and they them. have two of them, and they're both reelected in blue states. So it shows that they have an ability to reach compromise with their governing framework. The other two major parties don't, and so the light the light couldn't be brighter. Yep. Yeah, oh, it yeah. cannot be. And so, like I, I understand the stuff about, you know, I do understand it is a convenient excuse for people who are never going to join anyway because it is, right. But it also requires an absolute condemnation by the people who've spent years because it isn't it isn't a slight to you. <laughs> That the, those people are never going to vote for us anyway. They're looking for any out. Right. But what he did to people that have worked very hard for no thanks, spent a ton of money, and have spent every day bringing credibility early on was held in against receiving it, or was didn't wasn't sure if they wanted to become. Hours and lives given for it, mm -hmm. and so to do that to people that you sit side by side with. To do that to people that you know and look in the eye and meet and spend time with and to think that it's okay to do that to them, not to the people that are going to be prevent the party, is absolutely horrible. And he should be publicly chastised and humiliated because of it or maybe privately 
especially within the party, you know, maybe don't expose it. But I could not in that moment, I couldn't believe someone that has claimed to have been working for the same goals could do that to the people he spends time with in his personal life, in his private life. He goes out, you know, goes out trying to bring awareness to and to decide to go that route when everything else has been rising in our favor is a shot in the stomach and in the head to a bunch of people he claims to have respect for. Yeah, well, I do need to borrow a few words from uh, my friend Nick Sarwark um, with regard to this issue. Um, there are a lot of jokes in politics and people that are making light of politics. Uh, the libertarians ejected the guy that was making a joke of our right. our chairman's race um, in that aspect of politics. But Republicans nominated their joke. Yeah, no, yeah. I know. And I, I'm, I'm not criticizing. He's making like, a joke of the political process, and he became the Republican nominee. At least our guy was ejected from the convention. What? No, and it's the same up to you. I'm just saying, like, I think oh, James yeah. didn't – you know, it was handled privately. He, but, so it, he it, but he needs to be – I needs didn't to know be, that. Hold oh, on. yeah, he was ejected. Really? Yes, he was He was ejected from the convention. Deported, if you will. Good. And he was, he was ejected and, and was not allowed to hit the floor on Monday either. Good. Um, there are a lot of people talking about – different things, and um, I happen to be aware of them as serving on the National Committee, representing the state where he's from. Um, so I know you know, some of the, the back channel stuff that's hmm. occurring, um, and I can't share any of it because it hasn't happened, or you know, I, I want to make sure that it does before I say a word. Yeah, and that speaks you know, so much about the leadership of the party, you know, because it says that, listen, we're not going to tolerate this, even though we're, we are a private organization. We believe in voluntary association, but we're not going to be held hostage by martyrs through a private organization. Yeah, we're serious about where we're going. If you don't like it, you are free to start a new coalition and take from the members here. See if you can convince them to join them. And we're not going to we're not going to wage war against you. We mm -hmm. support you because, you know, you think that's the best way to champion liberty. We're just not willing to destroy our brand because you have a slight. It's a it's an important. Um, hugely impactful moment. Uh, I, I think that it is, yeah, this election cycle is hugely impactful. This particular story was low impact, but this needs to be a lesson to libertarians across the nation to get your crap straight because people are actually paying attention. I, I, I They think couldn't be more dying for an, a grown-up alternative right. to people that have a plan forward because they see that – there isn't a good choice in this election if you're going to look at the two major parties. Right. There is not. There isn't a choice that really touches people on a personal level and that causes them to have hope. It's the lesser two evils. Gary Johnson represents that hope. Right. His plan has to speak to the people looking for a credible third option that actually believes he, believe he can do it. And this guy can point to how he did it. So can his vice president. And you see these two guys and you think, wow, that's totally rational, reasonable, and this is what I believe in my personal life. You know what? I can do this. I can make that leap. And when someone thinks that it's okay to suicide bomb an organization in their coming out party, I guess they're cotillion, if you will, <laughs> like in the history of little Brett Bittner. Oh, I do declare. Their presentation to society. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a, just a shot in the face to a bunch of people who have been working side by side with you for so many years. And to think that it's okay to do that to them, not necessarily, you know, the American voter, but the people that have worked hard in this and spent money and time and years is just incredible to me. It's such a slap in the face to libertarians. It, it bugs me on that level, not on the level of it. Kind of the last impression that you saw. Luckily, there was a fantastic representation of the reaction that I think most of us had. Yeah. And and uh, it was handled perfectly. The reaction to it. Yeah. The, my only issue is that that reaction should have never been necessary because if he was serious about it. And he trusts well, the people he's worked with over the years because he knows was, you guys. That was the reason that I called it fraud. Yeah. Um, I, I think that his campaign for chair was strictly for that purpose. I know. And he's, how many times have you spent time talking to him? Uh, well, I've been to Michigan a couple times. Right. I mean, and he knows Nick. He knows everybody in the party. He's been in, you know, how, he's probably been in the party minimum six to eight years. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, and length, to, to, to have spent time with someone and then do that to them. If you have if you have an issue like that, address it behind private doors. Yeah, you know, because at the end of the day, the party should, you know, they don't have to be a totally united front. That's unrealistic expectation. No. But you should have enough respect for the people you've served side by side with and supporting the cause, 
to approach it with them before this ever becomes an issue. Because it is, you know, it's completely taking the legs out from people who have done nothing to deserve it except work hard. I agree. That bugs the hell out of me. I think, I think you're... Oops, sorry, sorry. Uh, I had to reset the Facebook Live. Uh, I think your sentiment is shared by everybody. I think that it is. It's just a slap in the face. And, you know, we are very image conscious in this party because we are an insecure party. You only get to make a first impression once yes. on the American voter. And, you know, so many people don't know what a libertarian is. So many people don't know who Gary Johnson is. So many people don't know. And so you are. You There is a lot of first impressions happening. And... You've got to take that seriously, and unfortunately, I think people like James Weeks don't quite understand what seriously means. No. I mean, because so, if you think about it, look at the, the lasting effects on the Republican Party for their refu their perceived refusal to support the Civil Rights Act. Right. They're the party of white me old white men and racists, and even though they have a big delegation you know, and they're a major party, to this day, those things last. Right. Abraham Lincoln, you know – Worked towards freeing the slaves and arguably, you know, almost lost the country over it. But that is irrelevant to the fact in the 1960s they were standing on the other side of civil rights. And not because they hated black people, but because they didn't think that was the right approach to take in order to have a society where they were, um, you know, where things were integrated organically. Right. And so the lasting impacts of things are just the damnedest thing to overcome because they follow you around for so long. Right. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's go on to talk about the presidential race. Um, I, I thought that that was, you know, I was at the, the race, so I didn't see a lot of what happened on Sunday because I was at the race and then my world was falling apart. Um, so I didn't quite keep up. Uh, Gary Johnson won on the second ballot. Second ballot. He was five votes shy on the first ballot. All right. So why, why do you think he was five votes shy? Um, I think a lot of it had to do with the – the VP thing, I really do. I talked about it when we when we had the post debate right um, discussion. I think that it was just a lot of people that were voicing their frustration over the idea that you have another Republican governor, very similar to him. He's he's kind of picking the guy that he wants to run with rather than letting the delegates decide and. Um, you know, it was it was kind of okay when it was Judge Gray in 2012 because right. Judge Gray was a known quantity to us. We didn't have near the time to to get to know Bill Weld. There, um, there was a week of vetting, and you know, even in the age of the internet, it's that's really hard. Right, and you have so many people that were looking at the instances where he hurt the party. Um, right, the 2006 New York thing, the, the endorsement of Kasich after his 2014. Issues. Didn't, didn't you endorse Obama? Uh, I don't remember that one. Bill Weld? Yeah. Yeah. No, I he endorsed Obama? No, I think Romney. He, yeah, well, I know he endorsed oh, okay. Romney, but. Um, I thought there was a Democrat in there somewhere. There may have been in 08, but I'm not 100%. But see, here's, sure. here's what I argued in the last podcast that you want Gary Johnson, the VP, there's really nothing but upside, as Greg has said. There's, uh, he, he's only going to help as opposed to hurt it came down alicia dern the reason she said she dropped out of the vice presidential race was that the debate commission and the polling firm said if weld's not on the ticket we're not gonna you, you just have no shot and so for the good of, of the party she stepped aside and didn't run well kind of okay she had a very very embarrassing moment during her nominating speech where she had weld on stage and was trying to get him to commit and he was not committing to the the things that she was trying to get him to commit to. Oh, okay. That would have had her actually drop out. I think it hurt her tremendously. Trying to force. Trying to force that and not getting it. Right. Um, because she was speaking, I think, on behalf of a lot of delegates who were concerned um, basically that, that Weld wouldn't screw the party over again. I mean, you're right. looking at three instances. This, this would be a third instance. If you go back to the 2006 thing in New York, the, the Kasich, endorsing Kasich after what he did to the Libertarian Party of Ohio in 2014, um, she was just trying – and some of the comments that he made with regard to gun control, um, you know, she was trying to get him to commit to, to hey, I'm not going to screw the party over, and he didn't seem to get that that was why he was up there. Mm. And he never committed to the things on stage. There were a few things that I saw after the fact um, that happened offstage in the crowd. Um, 
you know, there were some confrontational moments that happened right behind me. Yeah, Daryl Perry pretty much and, accosted him. And so what? there were, well, there was a, there was a confrontation that took place behind me um, with regard to some of the things that they were trying to get Weld to commit to and, and, or commit not to do. Um, and I, I, it was really the wrong place with the, I think with the way that Alicia did it. I mean, she could have said, look, she could have come out and said everything that she said on Facebook. Yeah. On stage. Um, but I think that the way that that played out was just kind of, it, it didn't play well for her or for Weld. Hmm. Um, I think it Cause didn't, del- it just delayed the inevitable, I think. It, it sounds being, really awkward. And it was super awkward. Poorly executed, which never goes Very through. awkward. Um, right. And so, yeah, Gary, Gary got it on the second ballot. Um, you know, there are people who, you know how it goes when you're at a convention, you commit to people on the first ballot, right? You know, hey, I, I'm there for you. You know, they've done something for you in the past. There's a deal that's been cut. There's, you know, you really like them or, you know, or there's new information that comes after you've already made a commitment, you know, so you have people that are committed on the first ballot and they, they stick to that. And in this case, it meant that Gary lost by, or didn't get enough by five. Okay. Um, he's five shy of winning on the first ballot, literally five votes. Um, I voted for Gary. Um, I've, I told you guys after the post debate thing, you know, I've been a Gary guy since 2010 and it was really his to lose. Uh, he got very close. Um, but then, you know, second ballot, they rallied their folks and saw, Hey, he's only five votes away. Let's just, let's just get it over with and move on with the day. Yeah. He's, he's gotten, I hate to say it, but libertarians were kind of trying to teach him a lesson that he yeah. can't just waltz in and get the nomination again. And we saw it with Harry Brown in 2000. Which, sorry, that's ridiculous. You're, I know, you, I know. Ridiculous. I'm just, the, I'm, the guy has spent four years I don't trying disagree. To, to build the party, trying to get us in the debates. I don't disagree. Trying to get us press. He, but you know how he, it goes. I know, I know. And it's a bunch of butthurt libertarians that don't have perspective on how politics actually works. But it, it, It's ha- people you know, playing politics. It's not actual political people. He's the second uh, nominee to be nominated twice. Um, but they did it to Harry Brown in 2000. Which is the guy who cr- has created who more is, libertarians, uh, like Andy Horning, Rex Bell. You know, these right. guys who are giants here in Indiana are Harry Brown libertarians. Because he spoke to so many people in a way that uh, he was one of the best libertarian communicators there is. And yeah. um, But, I mean, they gave him hell when he was running the second time. Right. And we saw that. We saw the fall off. and. You know, I was talking with you beforehand where we were talking about the fall off from the first nomination to the second. Um, we were talking about how the gray thing, the gray to weld uh, or the Johnson to gray thing in 2012 was going to be similar in the uh, weld in 2016 where you're going to have that drop off. Um, it wasn't as I, I thought it was going to be more severe than it was. Um, but, you know, Gary won. He was he his. Honestly, his acceptance speech was probably the thing that got Weld the nomination for VP. Why? He was emotional and authentic and pleading. It was it was exactly what he needed to do. Yeah, like that it was an impassioned plea it was, to lead and it was a, the party yeah, forward. Please, 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 please. And um, could, like a lot of people said, it was the first time they saw the fire from 2012 in Gary. Exactly, mm. because they, he saw that it was fading away. Um, I think one thing that the Johnson campaign probably could have done a little better with, uh, they probably could have had some better post first ballot plans. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, my understanding is up until two weeks before, they didn't even have a plan mm. for managing the floor or anything beyond the first ballot. Which is insane. And when you have that many candidates and that many questions about what could happen, I mean, who would have seen Mark Allen Feldman making it into the debate? Yeah, who would have seen him having his, almost have his Bednarik moment, um, as the other guys were just going after each other? You know, he could have been the last man standing. And I was looking at how people broke, and I didn't see McAfee people going to Johnson. I didn't see Peterson people going to Johnson. So really, the only thing that he had going for him was that he was able to pick up a couple folks here, a couple folks there, and people who saw the inevitable, and then ended up giving him the nomination. Hmm. And and he also got some of those second ballot. 
You know, they were committed to somebody else on the first, and then he got them on the second. Yeah, right. They were unbound, basically. Right. And, I mean, not that anybody's bound. You're all individuals. There are no unit voting or yeah. anything like There's that. There's no but, formal bound but process. But you've, you've committed right. yourself, and, you know, you, you don't – as a libertarian, yeah. one of the most important things is to do what you say you're going to do. So what is the feeling amongst the McAfee and the Peterson people? Because they were very passionate. They were. Um, Peterson is on board. I mean, he's there to help now. I saw he endorsed Gary, but what, he did. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the faithful are going to follow through. What are they? No, are not they doing? necessarily. Uh, you know, there's still some people who are feeling out what they're going to do and whining and complaining about the outcomes, and that happens every time. We saw that here in Indiana with the contested gubernatorial race. Um, not everybody's going to be friends. By the end of the day, or by the end of the weekend, or by the you know next weekend, or in some cases two months later, but um, you know that's kind of to be expected. You get very wrapped up and emotional. You get very committed to the person that you were supporting, and it's hard to you know you see your guy as as a saint, you see the other guy as goofy, um, and, and and I mean goofy like the Disney character, um, you know just kind of a buffoon, and you don't really. You don't really – it's hard for you to turn that switch. Yeah. And so, you know, there are going to be some people that they're going to – they're claiming that this is as bad or worse than um, the 2008 nomination, and they're just going to sit on their hands, or they're going to work on candidates down ballot, or, you know, they're not going to work on anything with regard to the presidential race, which I think is ridiculous because I know that they would be expecting that if their guy had won that yep. right. everybody kind of <laughs> – Sorry, my cat's asshole just smacked <laughs> Chloe right in the face. <laughs> so, you know, if, if their guy had won, they'd be expecting everybody to jump on board. Um, and then you have the, the people who don't understand that when you lose, you don't necessarily get to join the winning team. Right. Um, they, you know, they expect them to realize that elections have consequences. Right. right. In and a party where it historically hasn't. Well, and exactly. Because – when you're when you're on the losing team, you don't immediately get a leadership position in the winning team. Yeah, that that's not how it works because you lost because you didn't do as well. Whether it was your choice of candidate or the, so not sending out enough. Why would we mailers. expect that you could right. jump now, to the top of the leadership committee? Now there are some people that that are you know they 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 quickly hopped on board and they were ready to go and they've got positions with with the campaign because let's face it. There are essentially 50 statewide campaigns that are happening for Gary and for Governor Weld. That are getting set up and implemented right now. Exactly. And so, you know, there are people that are going to be – they're going to be a part of the Johnson campaign. There are people that are going to be crying and whining until November, and they're going to cast their vote for him. And then, you know, when the results aren't what people think that they might be, they're going to – they're going to play a lot of the I told you so card, and, and I have to point out that there's not any value in I told you so. Nope. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've seen many times where what I thought was going to happen happened, and I could have told you, but at the end of the day, for me, what good does it do to say, hey, I told you that you were wrong. I told you that you, were, you, know, you didn't have this. You didn't have that. Um, you know, you weren't doing this right. It doesn't do anything because the results have already happened. Honestly, you can kiss my ass. Like, if you're not going to get involved and you're just going to sit on the sideline and criticize, you know, I, I mean, at the, uh, I've been listening to a lot of Brene Brown this week, uh, The Power of Vulnerability. You can get it on Audible. Get a free audiobook on We Are Libertarians at wearelibertarians.com and get The Power of Vulnerability. It's very good. Uh, you know, at the end of my life, I want to have uh, stood in the arena and participated far more than I stood on the sidelines and criticized. You know, yep. and it is it is easy to stand on the sidelines and criticize because you risk nothing. But when you stand up and you actually do something or you say something, like if you stand up and you show any kind of leadership in this world, or if you do what we do on a podcast, you post anything on your Facebook, you show any kind of opinion or vulnerability in any way, you're going to get dinged. And so people just shrink from that, so they become critical. Well. And this party is is um so desperate for bodies that we keep our critical people around and they drive off all of the productive people who are willing to step into the arena and then get burnt out after one cycle because they're so tired of the nitpickers. So, you know, it, it's a real cultural problem that the Libertarian Party has. It's a growth issue because it's, you know, it's crossing the it's crossing that threshold from 
we haven't had to put ourselves out yet. It's been easy. Yeah. It's been easy to throw bombs from the, the cheap seats because there hasn't been a realistic chance of being caught and noticed on Meet the Press like Gary did yesterday. Right. We haven't had to lay out legislation and, a poli- and an agenda for what we would accomplish and how we would accomplish it. And so it's been easier to let people like, oh, for instance, like a Daryl Perry. Like in the past, we could have had a Daryl Perry run, and he could have thrown bombs from the cheap seats and hoped he got noticed. But then when the, eventually the impetus is on you to present the compelling message forward when you're running on being the credible adult solution to the party that elected Donald Trump and then the party that's electing Hillary Clinton. And even Hillary Clinton has yet to put forward a compelling plan for what her party wants to do going forward. She doesn't want to be like President Obama because she has to offer something different, and he hasn't been the liberal icon that he's portrayed himself to be. And then you have Donald Trump, who hasn't if he hasn't issued a ton of policy initiatives, but he at least said this is where I want to go. But no one really quite believes it yet. You know, there's still a lot of people that just aren't sure that's what he actually wants to do because they can't tell whether he will stand by that decision now. Whereas you have two two-term governors from Democratic states where they were both resoundingly reelected. They aren't per- they aren't perfect, and we don't know it's whether they actually aren't perfect or whether they're not perfect for political reasons that appeal to the average voter who isn't sure about libertarianism. But we have crossed the threshold from being seen as someone um, with legitimate criticisms that sell our criticisms well, and now people are saying, well, now I want someone to vote for. These guys seem to have it, but that means putting our vision forward, and that is going to be painful. Well, and, you know, one of the things that I, I can say, having stood as a candidate, um, you're going to agree with only one person 100 percent of the time, and that's yourself. And for those of us who've been candidates, mm-hmm. we've had the, the opportunity arena. to vote for ourselves, but that is literally the only time I've ever voted for anyone that I agree with 100 percent of the time. Exactly. There are going to be compromises that you have to make, and – at this point, it, when I was talking with the Boston Globe uh, about the, the nomination before it happened, um, they were talking about, well, they wanted to kind of get an on-the-ground view. I said, look, it's all about the spectrum of perceived electoral viability and ideological purity. The delegates had to pick, figure out where they were, and there were enough that were on the perceived electoral viability side of that spectrum that said, hey, we're, we're going to take this party where it needs to be. We're going and, to meet the American voter where they are. Right. And, you know, while I was not necessarily a big fan of Weld, I did vote for Larry Sharp um, because I see so much that he has to offer, so much that he has to offer libertarians, so much that he has to offer the people of New York. He's talking about running for governor in 2018 there. Um, Just such an amazing human being and a, a fantastic communicator of libertarian ideas. I get the the feeling about him that I did about Harry Brown. I get the feeling about him that I did about Ron Paul when it comes to the things that – when he's talking about libertarianism um, and – The compelling way he presents it. He is – you know, I, I think I talked about it uh, post-debate. I said, you know, Gary gets him in the mind. You know, he's changing minds. Uh, Larry Sharp can change hearts because that is a, that is the kind of guy that he is. And, you know, we talked a little bit about that at the beginning of the podcast. You know, there are so many libertarians that go after minds. There are so few of us. We win uh, the logical vote. We win the logic, rational vote if, because if we there's can no stick with it, it. And yeah, we do. But people don't buy on logic. No, you know, if they would buy, they, they don't buy remember. On. They don't remember the speech where you quoted all these statistics mm-hmm. and you laid out a perfectly logical argument. They remember how you made them feel. Yeah, exactly. You know, our voting decisions do not mirror rationality. No, you know, they, they do never not. do. No, you have to. You know, unfortunately. That's what sucks sometimes being in a party which is more logically minded is we have to figure out – we have to use dirty tactics. Mm -hmm. They feel impure. They Mm -hmm. feel – you know, they're qualitative, not quantitative. Right. And so that is – And it's tough. It's more to what we've got to overcome. When you're you're the good guy that you wear the white hat almost all the time, to not do that is really tough. It is. I mean, and that's that's why I think, like I've talked before, I struggle to find what, what kind of role I could even play in the party because I my my skill set is negative. My skill set is tearing down, not building. Or like right. you know, I can put forward a policy, you know, put together policy plans or policy agenda that I would follow. And that's what I liked about Weld is that yes, he is hardly. I mean, it is tough to call him a libertarian based on his past. 
Yeah. But that's tough to call any of us. I mean, you're the one rarity where you won't. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, you were a libertarian before you are anything else. It's yeah. true. I mean, I, I, there is footage of me hosting a Support the Troops rally where it is the most neocon thing you've ever seen. And you couldn't be more libertarian flirting with anarchy now. And so right. it's, it's an right. incredible thing to hold someone to their past. And, and that's my problem with the whole anti-wealth thing is there is no forgiveness of his past. and there There's is, still some for Gary. And there, and there's still people are still critical of Gary, just the fact that he had an R next to his name, and the Libertarian Party and the Libertarian movement as a whole needs to get itself to a place where we realize that we are a coalition party. So the Republicans, it's top-down ideology, and that's why you're seeing so many problems in the Republican Party is because that top-down ideology has shattered, and now there are no... Now they're trying to coalition build like the Democrats. Yes, you know? and so the Democrats are a coalition party of the LGBT community, the Identity black politics. community, the, the gay community, the uh, Hispanic community, um, Code Pink, and put all these groups together, they vote for the similar interests. Libertarians are an ideological coalition party, and we spend far too much time arguing over those ideologies and claiming the others are impure yep. instead of looking at a guy like Gary Johnson or a Bill Weld and saying, that guy's infinitely closer than Hillary Clinton or Bill Clinton. I can vote for them even though they're not in my ideological camp. You, When you don't do that, you shoot yourself in the foot, and you're just being – Moronic. I'm sorry. Like I, I understand that there there is a balance in politics. And Richard uh, Roger Paxton of the Lava Flow podcast, excellent podcast by the way, uh, download it now. Um, he and I have had this argument because when you're in politics, you do have to balance your pure political beliefs with your political pragmatism and strategy. And when you look at this election, yes, Daryl Perry is the most uh, pure ideological candidate, the person that I agree with in my philosophy the most, but is he the right, practical, pragmatic candidate for us to run in 2016 with this opportunity? No, that person is Gary Johnson, and the vice presidential candidate is, is, is uh, Bill Weld. Are they perfect in terms of ideology? No, because they are, they are direction libertarians. Like Mike Munger talks about, they are direction libertarians. They are moving destination the, libertarians. Their destination. They're, yeah, moving, yeah. they're moving the state piece by piece to a more libertarian society, and they're willing to work within the bureaucracy of government to get a more libertarian outcome. Right. Whereas uh, Daryl Perry is a destination libertarian who said, "This is exactly what I want. This is all I'm going to argue for, and people need to see the beacon of freedom in my message." And Daryl's great at that, and people do listen to him, and he does attract people. But does he attract non-libertarians? Not as much as a Gary Johnson will, because people have been fed socialism and statism and government for 100 years that they have to look at a Bill Weld or a Gary Johnson and go, okay, that person has this on their resume. They didn't blow up the state of New Mexico. I can trust them. I just need, we just need these people to press the L button one time. And get them to start conditioning for it. And we can't shoot ourselves in the foot with a with a John McAfee. I'm sorry. He's not an electable guy. He was talking about the broad philosophy of libertarianism. He's not talking about specific specific policy points. When you watched the vice presidential debate, I was very impressed by Larry Sharp. But again, it was broad libertarian politics, broad libertarian messages. Bill Weld is a policy wonk who is going to give you a solution on the issues, and that is what voters want. They'll say Donald Trump doesn't have one. Hillary Clinton only criticizes Trump's right. lack of one, and here is what the future looks like, and I can take you there. And, you know, we are doing this for voters. I'm sorry, libertarians. We are here to win votes. We are not here to – we are libertarians. is about winning libertarian hearts and minds. What the Advocates for Self-Government does is winning, is helping people recognize that they are libertarian to start them down that path. The next step is a We Are Libertarians, where we're a fun outlet for you to learn more about libertarianism. The next step is to get involved and fall down that rabbit hole, so eventually you're so libertarian you can't possibly be involved in the Libertarian Party anymore. And what's funny about this this dichotomy that you're talking about between Gary Johnson and, and Daryl Perry, and, and it, you could pick any two people that are kind of on the spectrum that I described you know, at one end and the other. We're arguing about 5%. Right. We really are. We're right. arguing about the five percent of things that we don't agree one hundred percent of the time on. You take I side with, and you know you you go through, and I can I can put my super ideological purity hat on, 
and I'm going to get Daryl Perry every time. Yep. I can put the – this is from an electoral politics, electoral viability standpoint. I'm going to come out with Governor Johnson. and it, But it's not going to be that Daryl is – at 60% near Hillary, you know, it's that Daryl's at 95% and Gary's at 100. Yep. And, and so, in all honesty, you take a look at everybody that ran from from all 17 candidates. And trust me, I saw all of them speak at least once. <laughs> um, I, You know, I was involved in that, the unofficial last word debate, and I saw so many people that were, in, that were running for president. And they're all – infinitely better no matter what your thoughts are about them about whatever policy it is or whatever misstep they had on the campaign trail or whatever they're all infinitely better than what the republicans and democrats Unless are offering you, you are a jewish baker in 1945 the decisions and no. the, the criticisms no. don't matter they yeah, are no. irrelevant chatter designed to drum up discontent among people that are butthurt it was it, it was a way to divide and a way to find that five percent that you disagree on, whether you know it was Peterson or McAfee or Feldman or Perry or you know even down the line with Shauna Sterling and and Kevin McCormick and some of those guys that were in the second and third tier of candidates, you know, they were all infinitely better, all infinitely better than than anything Team R or Team D yeah, is, I, is offering. I, I agree with on my eye side with uh, all the presidential candidates in the '90s for the Libertarians. I agree with Donald Trump on 69%. That is a far drop. I believe I agree with Hillary Clinton on 23%. That's a huge drop. Like, there is just no question that you only have one choice for president if you're a libertarian. It is a Gary Johnson. And if you want to, you know, if he's not pure enough for you, then maybe you should just stop paying attention to politics and just get out of politics and stop volunteering for the Libertarian Party because th that's just – your goal is to give voters what they want in, in as much of a libertarian package as you can stomach, okay? It is about voters. It is about what voters want. It is not about what libertarians want. You have to stop being so navel-gazing. Otherwise, this party will never grow, and the – the uh, like that's – if you want to attack Gary Johnson, then don't call yourself a libertarian person, a party member anymore. Like it's – like he is the candidate. If you are involved in the if you are involved in the in the power structure in a leadership position within the Libertarian Party, you should be supporting Gary Johnson. And for the most part they are. And and if you don't, then you should not have a leadership position in the Libertarian Party. You can be a libertarian and not be part of the Libertarian Party. You can go be a Trump voter and be a libertarian, I guess. You can go be a nobody. You can be like my former intern, Lauren Rumpler, and say voting is violence and you're not going to vote and you're just forcing. That's fine. Yeah. There's no shame in any of that. No. But there should be a level of shame if you are a leader in the party and you're not supporting your top of the ticket candidates because you are part of an organization that you, you – an organization, a house divided cannot stand. That's just plain and simple. No, because we have a hard enough time. And, you know, yeah. one of the things I looked in the news coverage was I, I kind of expected the news coverage on the right because the right tends to see the libertarian – one of their formerly own are going to be more hostile to the libertarians mm -hmm. nominating Weld and Johnson. And so a lot of that was they focused on the, you know, um, James Weeks. And yet then I was like, well, you know what, I'm not going to read that because I, I know what that is. Like, you know, everyone knows what their point is and why the, it's, re it's written out of fear. So I was like, I'm going to read Slate and The Atlantic and primarily those to see what the, the feedback was. And it was shocking that their coverage was primarily about Johnson not winning on the first ballot and almost saying libertarians have this moment. Like they were sympathetic, but libertarians are on this precipice of something that can be grown and as a viable option in the absence of a conservative option. And yet um, I think it was three out of four articles that all came out the day after – were asking, ending their article, asking the same question: Should the libertarian presidential and vice presidential nominees leave the party behind? Yeah. And that is the exact opposite of what we should be trying to do. Right. You know that right there should send tremors to everyone. You know that is you know, that has been throwing un, uh, unjustified blows at Johnson and Weld. Holy crap! We're on. They're actually paying this close of attention, and now they see cracks that I helped cause. That should be a Awake, you know, it should waken them up and make them want to say, "Listen, I need to get in line 
I'm going to, you know, I'm going to stop criticizing Gary and I'm going to start talking. Maybe you don't sing his praises, but you at least talk about how the Libertarian Party is offering the real solution in the election. Is there are other ways to talk about the growth in the in the in meeting that moment where the voters seem to want it. Yeah, um, I think this is a good time to get into your we never got to your perspective on the, the convention, Greg. You were there for a brief time, but you have uh, you were like, I don't really think I should share. It's going to be tough love. My my tough love isn't for the Libertarian Convention as it is, I tend to get attacked on where I see the party going in the future. So I am all for the Libertarian Party growing. I am all. I think it's under the best leadership it's ever been on. I think it's making the best decisions it's ever made and taking every step in the right direction to being a viable political party. My criticism, or not criticism, is my long-term forecast or where I see things going are that, one, I think we live in a world where there are more collectivists than there are um, – Individuals, you know, the individual the group of people who are committed to libertarianism or libertarian sympathetic leanings are always outnumbered. You know, the trends of history are always that when you do finally get that small individualist revolution, the collective gangs up back against them because they don't like it or want to force people to live a certain way. And so I see the Libertarian Party growing and growing and growing. I see it becoming a real political party where it starts to, in a three-way races, get tw- between – Anywhere between 25 and 35 percent of every vote, um, with the Republican, you know, flip flopping between that 25 and 35, but then the Republican all, or the Democrat always taking 40. The collective outnumbering the individual, I can see a point where the Republican Party and the Libertarian Party look at each other and say, "God, we just keep getting our asses handed to us by five percent and not being in the arena because we're losing. How can we turn turn this tide?" And I think it is that the libertarian message and ideology becomes the replacement for the leftover remnants of the political party of the GOP towards its inevitable death. Yeah. You know, I can see it happening one of two ways where the libertarians are ushered in as the ideolo- the replacement for conservatism in the ideological foundings of the party. But I think it would be too tough of sell to too many. And so it's like when the Whigs split up, um, the, the, par- the major party has to go because of just years of bad feelings just towards bad. the – Bad, but, bad branding. Right. And so then you had the Free Soilers. And so the Free Soilers and the Northern Whigs ended up the foundations of not even right away the new Republican Party. It was the National Union Party that Lincoln ran on. And so I am I foresee the destiny of the individualist movement within American politics being not necessarily the Libertarian Party in the long run. It might be a constitution party. It might be right. a, a liberty party. I, I – because the re- – the formation of the Republican Party was around a single issue, which was – Slavery. It wasn't just slavery. It was the – the th- not the three-fifths compromise. Missouri the, compromise. The Missouri, Missouri compromise. compromise. It was on a specific issue that was very hotly debated in that time, and all these disparate groups came together and said, this is a major issue that we all agree on. We need to coalesce around this issue. And I could see uh, the national debt being the issue that can kind of coalesce all these conservative – right-leaning groups and libertarians into a single force if they can just stop biting each other's face off. Well, it's just the social issues that split them. I mean, right. granted, it's our perception of government because Republicans at the local levels are every bit as statist as Democrats are Absolutely. at the national levels. Right. And so that's the hypocrisy is that they run on being small government constitutional conservatives, and yet they hold press conferences celebrating HUD funds coming into their communities ushered in by a gov- Republican mayor. So the reality is the, Re- the Republican Party, like we talked about last episode, is intellectually bankrupt. It's no longer philosophically driven. It's playing identity politics. And there has to be an ideological replacement, and the only one that even looks remotely close to something tolerable and stum- that can be stomached by the old gray hairs that make it up is a focus around economic issues only and then an abandonment of social issues, but it has mean to like- be – the Tea Party 2010 Republicans uh, and they've completely abandoned the idea months. of limited <laughs> government. They were running only on economic issues, oh. and and now they're uh, – Samantha B did a fan – if you aren't watching Full Frontal with Samantha B, and not just because there are going to be libertarians on there um, from the convention at the next couple episodes, but she really did a great job of pointing out that the 2010 Tea Party revolution that kind of never happened, but 
the people that got elected running solely on the economic issues are now the ones that are celebrating the regulations with regard to the size of the hallways of abortion clinics in Texas and are singing the praises of the transgender bathroom law in North Carolina. These so-called ignoring social issues Republicans that ran – on, on the under the guise of limited government and under the guise of economic freedom and only focusing on economic issues, six years later they are among the biggest statists. But it's their social issue stuff. That They're the did new it. culture warriors, right? Mm -hmm. They are. They're the new cultural warriors that have realized it, it's. It, it, this is the the conundrum of the Republican Party. Everyone loves to talk about the debt and small government, limited government. That doesn't fundraise. Nope. Guns, abortion, those fundraise. It's yep. the cultural issues. And so they get elected, and they inevitably start tacking towards where they can fund, where they can raise money, and their super sure. PACs can raise money, and they're raiding with the conservative organizations. Mm -hmm. And so you have someone like a Ted Cruz, who's supposedly, supposedly part of the Liberty Caucus, sounding like Jerry Falwell. You know, you have person after person just abandon the things they promised, including the pursuit of those things. And instead, becoming 1994 ditto head Congress Republicans talking about the need to get, um, you know, uh, oh, what was it? The need for uh, America to stop having a disgraceful values in the White House with Bill Clinton and all the awful things he was doing that discredit our nation's standing in the world um, culturally. And until until they get serious about that, or until the the fundraising base dies off, which it every year yep. it, it just dies and dies and dies, but they still show up on election day for the meantime. We won't, we won't reach that point, but that's why I'm pro the Libertarian Party growth is because they are the only party of economic, true economic uh, non-intervention and, mm -hmm. you know, real small constitutionally limited small government, and they will, they will grow. They will grow to a point where it will be so painful for the Republicans, they'll have to trot out corpses on voting day to even have any chance at winning. Well, and one of the things that I wanted to throw in there when you were talking about percentages um, – you're talking about it from a plurality state. Mm -hmm. For those of us who grew up in an era where you had to win 50% plus one, you build that coalition and you don't have the Democrats win. Right. If because you can forge if, it. If you, are, if you are in a situation like I was uh, when I ran for office, I wanted to make sure that I won without a runoff. Um, you had to and, or else you wouldn't win at all. Right. And so, you know, it, it, the Never Bittner crowd – could show up and and oppose me and and they could get that 50 percent plus one and, and you know how they fundraise they do <laughs> they do a much better job than those terrible t-shirts pro com <laughs> slash never bittner I, I am not pro bittner just because i bought a t-shirt okay <laughs> being pro bittner is being anti-america just because five dollars <laughs> of never bittner went to we are libertarians by getting a never bittner t-shirt it does not mean you are supporting bittner <laughs> yes <laughs> it is never bittner hashtag never bittner Don't follow the it. money Follow yeah, the money right. trail. <laughs> well, do you think we've uh, covered this uh, thing enough today? Chloe? We've been on for quite a while. <laughs> hey, Chloe. Hey, awesome. guys. How's it going? How was the trunk? <laughs> Very dark. No air. No, air, no air conditioning. Golf clubs on one side. You know, it happens. Mm -hmm. Man, such white male privilege. Yep. Take your privilege. That's You're a white male. <laughs> Gosh, you you're funny. a white male. Oh. <sighs> well, I am AIDS exhausted. Skrillex. Yeah. The greatest name for a meme ever, right? AIDS Skrillex. AIDS Skrillex and Carl the Cuck. <laughs> Cucky Tales with Carl the Cuck. AIDS Skrillex was, uh, I still laugh at that. I know. Chloe, thank you for being here. Hey, I'm, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah. I, so what's your deal? Yeah. I don't know what's your deal. Did people come up to you at the convention and ask what your deal was? I think the only person that did was Travis. Yeah. Because he uh, just was the one that, like, really, really listened. But Everybody else asked if they could see your deal. No, everyone, <laughs> not in those words, but a lot of people asked about Lens and you. Mm -hmm. And then when I introduced did they, hold on, Bittner, Bittner. Did they yeah. ask more for me or did they ask more for Greg? I'm not going to tell you. You can't separate I us know. from the podcast. It's because I'm in a weak place, isn't it? You people love Greg more. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was, I get it. He's it was, way more likable than me. It was oh, I think there's quite a long list of people who'd beg to disagree. <laughs> 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 One of them's running for Senate. <laughs> oh, uh, great. All right. Well, 
I, I think that wraps this up. Yep. I think yeah. that's about enough of this. Um. All right. Let's uh. Let's wrap it up. And if you want to promote, self promote anything, I'm sure you do, Chloe. I do. All right. I really do. Let's hear it. So I move into the hotel for Miss Indiana Week this upcoming Sunday. Miss Indiana. Yes. Very exciting. Um. Excited to represent Wall and my community and everything that I've been doing the last ten years. And um, your skill is memeing. Memeing. Memeing on stage. Yeah. Yes, that's my talent this year. The art year. of the meme. The art of the meme while playing piano. <laughs> um, but I'm excited to... I've been working on the slideshow for weeks. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's just about perfect. <laughs> but i um, excited to finish out the 10 years that I've been in the Miss America organization. Um, so it's I'm, I'm excited. It's going to be real bittersweet. And the listeners at home have the opportunity to be the sixth judge, if you will, and can vote me into the top 11. Um, votes are a dollar, and eventually I'll share the link somewhere. Um, and all of that money goes to the Children's Miracle Network. So that's fantastic. Always, you know, for the kids. Can't wait to spend some time at Riley's this week with the with my uh, fellow contestants too. Mm-hmm. So yep. it's going to be really fun. And there is an offer. There is an event that people can come and support you at, right? Yes, I will put that in the group or we can Best figure that out somehow turns away from that based yeah. on your uh, convention experience <laughs> well the they can't is, get is close and their security yeah. so you haven't been be wedding fine. sacked yet so why yeah. you know <laughs> Listen, why risk it libertarians <laughs> there is a group of hot chicks <laughs> young hot chicks that will be on stage at the zionsville Nashville? performing arts center performing arts center on thursday thursday the 18th 16th. Tickets are $20 to borrow it from your mom. Yep. And, and come out and vote for you. Yes. Well, and the vote, voting is done online, but if they want to come see me play piano, they can come this Thursday. There's an next, event. Next Thursday. Next I'm Thursday. sorry. Go right. steal yourself your own Princess Leia. And yeah. Chloe's little sister's going to be there, and I'm going to sit next to her. <sighs> We're in love, and you can't stop it. Sister Ew. <laughs> Sith. <laughs> You. I'm out. Oh, no. Will you give me away at our wedding? Okay, so vote for me. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I, had, oh. I, did, I I want to ask you, did you ever, at any point, did you, so this past week, uh, I've been trying to, Kat and I, her 19-year-old sister, she's what, three, four years younger than you? Almost five, okay. actually. Uh, and uh, Kat launched her YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Shout out to your little sister. Mm-hmm. And so this past week, we've been uh, saying that we were going to go on a date on Friday night. Right. And we worked all week on it together. Yes. It was a couple's project. Did at any point you believe that I was actually taking your little sister out on a date? When she texted me while I was driving from either like, I think I, I went home this past weekend. So as I was coming from Indy to Elkhart, she texted me and I'm like, I've got my map. And she said, hey, can I stay at your place on Friday? Uh, but if not, I can just stay at Spangles. And I, like, about dropped my phone <laughs> and was like, yes! are you kidding me? Yes! Like, this is not funny. Are Troll. you kidding me? I was I was not happy. Yes! I was not happy. I was already in a bad mood, so that oh, just made it worse. I can't wait to share this news with Kat. I'm going to text her right now. How about not? I'll, all right, I'll give her a call later. <laughs> She, <laughs> it just it it genuinely irritates you, doesn't it? That's my little sister. Like it's weird. You you know I'm not actually gonna date your sister, right? I know, but it's still kind of weird. I know, but yeah. she's, oh well. She's 19. We, we need to get her down here this summer. My age limit's to... 20. Please. Actually, I've kind of upped it to like 30. <laughs> Half your age plus seven, yeah. right? That's, exactly. That's the rule. Okay. All right. Now, L- Brett. Little Brett Bittner, why don't you wrap up at your own pace? Oh, gosh. Well, you know, really the only thing that I want to make sure that the wall listeners do is to give $5 to wall by going to tchip.com. How brave. Slash Never Bittner and getting your very own Never Bittner t-shirt. It comes in UGA red. It has my face on it, and it has the hashtag Never Bittner. Thank you very much, Chris Spangle. And $5 from each one of those shirts will go to We Are Libertarians. That is a commitment that I am making to Chris. I yes. made it to him as I made the shirt, and I'm very much looking forward to wearing mine at the next wall live, uh, provided, of course, that I'm invited to attend. June 27th, 
June 27th, if you are a listener, if you're in the Indianapolis area, if you want oh, a road boy. trip in, June 27th. We're going to have to hurry. Yeah. Why? Brett and I will be in D.C. Oh, we yeah. We have a blogger activist fly in with Freedom Works that will be flying back in Monday. So hey. Hopefully yeah. we'll be on time. We're hopefully important. we won't have our Orlando uh, four-hour delay. Oh, my gosh. Hopefully that was some, terrible. Somebody won't put NSA keywords on your wall. That's why we right. won't check in until we're – Actually, on the plane. Right. Yep. As someone who has lived that nightmare, I can assure you it will not be I. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yes, please buy a Never Bittner t shirt. Yes, please do. It does help Wall. Um, and, that and is, he, I was trying something out, and I figured, you know, I'll, I'll help Wall with, with the. Uh, he, he found an amazing vendor, too. So, we're going to have the ability to print t shirts now, thanks to Little Brett Bittner. So, if you're a fan of. That sort of thing. If you want a, a We Are Libertarians t-shirt, then Brett Bittner is helping you out. Show show yeah. us that you're that you're interested in t-shirts. Yeah, that was actually one of the reasons when Spangle and I were talking about the idea. Um, it was one of the cool things was aside from him getting five dollars from each t-shirt, is that uh, you'd actually see the appetite for the audience when it comes to stuff like that. So if there are, you know, if we want to put the the uh, what do you guys what do you call the Velcro shoes of mine? Oh, um, the pacemakers. The pacemakers. The pacemakers. Yeah, the air pace. bitners. So if we need to put right. the air bitner pacemakers on a shirt, we can do that. Um, you know, but we're trying it out with never bitner first. <laughs> All right, cool. So please check that out. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna look into making some t-shirts and come up with some clever phrases. Wrapping it up is one Mr. Gregory Lenz. Sorry, I'm on I'm on Klonopin. It's not good. Nice, nice. <laughs> so you're well medicated. Oh, <laughs> thank goodness. Listen, I've been. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. How can I feel all these feels? I don't <laughs> want to feel all my feelings. Uh, exactly. I've spent 31 years burying them and one year feeling them, and it's terrible. I know. <laughs> if I could just revert back. Yeah. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. Red, yeah. Blue pill me. Give me soma. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, just two things. One, first and foremost, we would be bad libertarians if we didn't announce the uh, Bilderbergs are convening <laughs> their annual retreat and plotting the his, the next year of global history. And apparently the hot topic is the British exit from the euro, the Brexit. I don't know if anyone here has been following that whatsoever, but I would uh, highly doubt it, convinced you're all looking at your phones. Yeah. Um I was looking up the special message from the Bilderbergs. I have to give the signal at the end of the show. Oh, you are the uh, you're the puppet master oh, of the new world you order. You don't have the tooth implant that it just automatically goes right into your your ear canal. No, unfortunately, I had oh. a bad kernel in popcorn and it fell out. That's a shame. <sighs> Forever lost. Uh, I'm no, um, oh. was that the signal? Because uh, are you offended by my gas, Chloe and Agnos, the person who wrecked the bathroom before we went on the air? I did no such thing. She who destroys the restrooms. <laughs> Shiva, destroyer of restrooms. It is great to see how you smell good, you look good, you didn't do anything explosive in the bathroom that we know of. To quote Joe Biden, you are articulate and clean. <laughs> <laughs> Last time she smelled like a Greek hero. <laughs> Gero? Hero? Gero. The Gero. G. You don't pronounce the G. What's wrong with you? So it's Ananas? No, no that, but that's. It's that's Anagnos. How you, that's how you say pineapple in French. Ananas. No, no, it's Ananas, you guys. No, you guys are giving me. Say it, sl- say it slower in French. Ananas. 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 No. It no. sounds like a German man talking about my butt. <laughs> Adolf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh God! So the Bilderbergs. Geez. Anyway, no, the Bilderbergs, and then that's uh, the Brexit, which is don't forget domin- CFR. Yep, um, dominating all. You know, the Council of Foreign Relations. Um, who else did we pre- remember? No, um, but the Brexit's going to be interesting. It's a lot of or much ado about nothing. There's no way they'll upset the global financial system. They'll just keep threatening it to get better borrowing rates from uh, sovereign debt funds. And then uh, lastly, vote for if you are in District 8. So if that is your Indiana Congressional District, remember to vote for Andrew Horning. Like his page on social media and feel free to share some of his um, memes and such. And I would uh, much appreciate it. All right. Well, that information is brought to you by Greg's new master. Uh, Master. Miss Master. Yes. Master. (laughs) Whipped. Whipped, Whipped, uh, huh? Whipped. Listen, I know the signs. Nobody is whipped harder than I am. Uh, yeah. Uh, excuse me? You are Mr. 
Uh, I have been informed via message. Yeah, via I approved private, it. Via private message. Which I approve. That you are uh, not, she is not Mrs. Gregory Lins. No. You are Mr. And H. Oh, just H? Uh, uh, Mr. H. I don't know if I should say her first name, but. Okay. You know. Oh, you're good. You're good. Okay, Mr. Lindsay H. Mr. Lindsay H. Right. Is that right? A kept man. That's well, that's what I heard. He's been. Has he not spent more time down in the eighth district? How would you know? Quote unquote, mm-hmm. canvassing for votes. Oh, this please week? trust me. After this weekend, it was campaigning uh, hard. I bet it was. What are you, oh my god! I bet it you was full scale campaign that you launched. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was like a. You know, it felt. It was exciting. It felt exciting that people were so ready for libertarianism to hear it. You were knocking on every door and checking every box. Okay, well, <laughs> All right. and we wonder why we suck at outreach to women. <laughs> was that really? Was that offensive? We have seized the torch of the war on women from the Republican Party. I was somehow. offended. Everything you do is offensive. Well, that's listen. that's because he's a white man. <laughs> yep. So at the Indy 500, it was there was a tribute to the uh, Pearl Harbor guys. They had a bunch of Pearl Harbor survivors. There for the 100th running of the Indianapolis 500, sponsored by Toyota, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, was there, it really? Uh, there are um, <laughs> there's one Japanese driver, and I just tweeted out, "Wow, I bet this is making Sato feel really uncomfortable." And a local DJ wrote back, "I'm not going to retweet that. Somebody will be mad at me, but that is good work." <laughs> and I just said, "If somebody's not offended, you're not doing your job, young man." Uh, thank you for joining us here on this episode. We appreciate you so much. We thank you for joining us here on this podcast. Wait, you're not really putting this out, are you? Why wouldn't I? I don't know. W- what? I uh, thought this was good. Oh, okay. Listen, don't undermine my gut. It's very shaky right now. <laughs> I have to learn to trust my intuition. And, More than mine. And I just got a <laughs> mess. A I got a response, and I'm triggered. So Good. What? <laughs> Nothing. All right, guys. I'll uh, I'll talk to you later. It is great to see you. Thank you for being here, Chloe. You look absolutely thrilled. We'll we'll be there to support you. And uh, it's gonna be so fun. yeah, and we're gonna be there to support little Brett Bittner as always by buying a T-shirt. And Greg, we're gonna be there to uh, help you pick up trash on the side of the road in Owen County. Owen County. Owen County. So, all right. Thanks, guys, for joining us here on this episode of We Are Libertarians. Love you so much. Uh, this was a shit episode. And as always, we promise to do better next time. <laughs>